welcome hi youtube <laughs> so yeah we're live on youtube tonight so um i think uh, everybody's using different names of course i'm alan of course i have my name right but uh because people don't know your faces always <laughs> you guys can introduce yourselves <laughs> so much work i know <laughs> if, if you don't know me by <laughs> now <laughs> You will never, ever, ever know me. So I'm, I'm Ian. For this episode, I'm cousin of chaos. I, I know the Lord, but you know, I, mm -hmm. yeah. There you, there you go. How about that? I, I've updated my name for y'all. Better. Wait, I can, I can change it while we're in here? Yeah, there's a uh, little, yeah. little image of yourself with three little bubbles. If you click it, you click on edit name. You can even like edit audio avatar so you have a little picture of yourself oh. like it's uh yeah all sorts the of things stuff. we learned at the last minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, delusions are hilarious you're right we're never <laughs> we're always on on time ish we just don't always start on time there's a difference yeah there, 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 there is a big difference there so yeah, right. welcome to the Will Reads, and uh, Alan is a dark friend. Thank you, Ian. Um, so, <laughs> so we're starting Lord of the Chaos now um, uh, in this new format where we'll be live on YouTube. Um, uh, we're going to be doing this from now until it breaks and or doesn't work anymore or something. So um, are you guys quit listening to us because you don't want to see your faces anymore? We'll go back to just being voices on your radio um so should we and if you're local recording by the way i'm sorry i should ask that earlier no you're good okay um yeah so and then also um you know if you're tuning into this on youtube and you've never heard of us and like what's this new youtube thing going on it's on book six where are the rest of the stuff we are a podcast there's 117 other episodes on any podcast platform you want so feel free to go peruse check it out um find us apple podcast spotify really just anywhere and um yeah um your local circle k yeah, yeah pro <laughs> pro might be probably there. probably uh, actually. so um <laughs> yeah if my face is not going in and out it's because i have this giant mic right here in front of me and the blue screen or green screen makes my face disappear sometimes so i'll work on that this is all just going to be a technical glitch fest for our first time ever welcome um, to our first show <laughs> 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 exactly <laughs> so before we get any further i do want to announce we do have a new patreon um it is um uh, in english it's glory to the builders i'm trying to pronounce this right in russian because it actually was in russian um oh, good luck. Joined. so it was slava Stralitelum. tell me if i'm right Please i don't know <laughs> or is that Polish? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Huh? They're all the same. Um, yeah, Similar. Uh, Stoli vodka. Um, what's? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only Russian I know. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. And then as far as um, you know, as far as our other Bellas, and he was a top tier pa Patreon as well. So our new Patreon is a top tier Patreon. Bella, so, a new Bella. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, um, and we do have um, our other Bellas, of course, um, David and Remy. So thank you guys so much. We are going to work on getting you guys back on live again for another episode in the future. Uh, just hold tight, and we'll get there. Um, so moving on to personal life, um, yeah, a lot happened over last week for me because uh, I was off on Friday because uh, I took it off to do like a dad daughter date and took my. Uh, daughter to the the virginia zoo um down norfolk virginia which was which was nice uh she had fun uh, we had been there before but she was a lot younger last time so i think she didn't remember any of it um but she had a whole lot of fun um just going around seeing all the animals um yeah i didn't really get to see the lion or the tigers they were hiding but um gotta see some other animals they, they always hide they sleep all day long big cats do um but she was really excited about that and it was kind of downer but uh the giraffes came over to say hello so that was it was nice it was fun but then while i was gone my wife decided to run to uh lowe's uh and came back with a truck full of lumber um and said hey by the way our fence is kind of janky around the garden you want to build a new fence so the rest of the weekend all i did was build a fence because that's what you do when your wife buys a bunch of lumber and lumber ain't cheap guys i mean that's like gold so i mean if you got lumber i gotta use it so 
um, or that are selling the black market. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bet you fill your gas tank up all the way without even looking. You just top it off, don't you? All over over there. I, I buy lumber. lumber and fill my gas tank up. I can't it afford to fill my nice. gas tank up. Uh, um, yeah, so, I'm about to say, if you can afford to do that, you're rich. You're rich, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was talking to locks it day. in and walks away, be like, fill it up. Yeah. I do that, but I cry <laughs> as I walk into the store, so I forget that it's happening. <laughs> Buy myself a one dollar water bottle and come back out and yeah. don't look at the number. <laughs> we'll at the, I'm dead serious. Yeah. It's just yeah, just just close your eyes and and hope yep. and pray. Um, but yeah, so I spent all weekend building a fence. Um, well, it's cool. Cause she actually did actually buy a uh, nail gun as well. So it made it a lot easier. So I got a little uh, pneumatic um, nail gun to go with the lumber she bought. She kind of went all out, um, which I'm like, it's nice, but it was a kind of expensive weekend for a fence, but Hey, whatever we got a new fence. Um, it is 90% done. I still have a few more touch up things to do, but now the dog can't get in the garden anymore. So that's, that was the real, she was digging holes there. So that's why, but that's made for personal life, at least for right now. Yeah. And after spending two grand in the garden, you'll save, <laughs> um, the $60 <laughs> in produce bills because of the stuff you grew in the backyard. Uh, so, uh, uh, it's but the, the fresh $60 stuff out of the garden keeps back given is, though, man. Yeah. It yeah. Is it's awesome. compound <laughs> vegetation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to exactly. include Alan's blood, sweat, and tears. There yeah. you go. Uh, oh, I, 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 bled, I bled. See that blister on my finger? Actually, uh, there's um, I, I was uh trying to remove a pin on a tiller because I was actually tilling the garden too. We have one of the motorized oh. mantis tillers. Wait, and, um, gas powered? Yeah, four stroke engine, buddy. Get out of uh, here! <laughs> <laughs> He's just out in his backyard, um, so, just. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sitting, so i'm tilling it and it got caught in a root and i got i you take sipping the on out, some cavassier to, to, to take the blades off and i didn't wear gloves and i was trying to pull the pen out and it actually just stripped off like a bunch of flesh yeah yeah it, was, it, it, it hurt it hurt a little bit but i'll just keep nursing the bottle and i'll be good so what's going on with you guys so before you start happy birthday kate oh happy birthday I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know who that was. <laughs> All right. Um, my world. Last weekend, uh, Meredith and I took uh, her kids and my two youngest kids, and we went on a hike uh, and camped out overnight. Um, we picked a trail, probably a little bit intense for the younger kids, but they were troopers, and they did a fantastic job. In, um, in about... Two and a half miles, we did 1,200 feet in elevation gain, uh, mostly up, like a, a couple little dips and then shooting back up. It would have been half of that, um, except I took a wrong turn on the trail <laughs> because the trail we were supposed to continue on was so overgrown, I didn't even realize there was another option there and just kept going. <laughs> and we went down for a while and I was like, this doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be mostly a climb and then kind of level out and go ridgeline till we get to the campsite. Uh, by the time I had double checked on the map where we are and we were supposed to be going and figured it out. Like I'd already gone a mile in the wrong direction and a mile down. So we had to <laughs> turn around and go back up. Um, we never made it to the actual campsite we wanted to go to because all that climbing and 90 degree heat during the day, the kids were just pounding the water. Uh, and we did a quick count when we got back to kind of like that point where I missed my turn and we didn't really have enough water to be able to make it to the actual site and cook the dinner we wanted to cook, whatever. So we kind of made a makeshift campsite, but the kids had a good time. Uh, I made a fantastic fire. It's very proud of myself. Um, yeah, it was fun. And I don't want to jinx it because we haven't actually signed the lease yet. I complained last episode about how hard it is to find houses for rent these days. Uh, but we are very close to being locked into a four bedroom uh, the West end of Richmond, which is close to where she needs to be for the kids and, and their school and not a bad commute for me and everything. So she is supposed to sign the paperwork tomorrow. Um, that's awesome. Hopefully by the time this releases or, you know, we record next week, I'll have good news. We'll it's see. All big steps. Good, sir. Yeah. And, uh, 
So I needed to get a hold of my graduate transcript and I knew I had an unofficial version of my email somewhere. So I Googled um, the university and transcript or I searched it within my email and a whole bunch of emails from that university came up that was in my junk mail. And I was like, what the heck, why are they reaching out to me? So I clicked on one just to see what it was about. And they were like, Hey, we received, um, like additional payment through the VA cause post nine 11, I won't explain how it works, but I, I went know, from I like know. a 70% to a hundred percent. Um, so, so for all the time, it. well, I, I didn't realize that they go back and everything I've done under the post nine 11, they will bump that up. So they gave it yep. to the school and the school was sent it to the address of where I used to live. And they were like, Hey, you know, you still haven't cashed it. Just contact us if you move. So I called them. I got like six different checks of a very good big amount. chunk of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, the difference between a 70%, 100% on the post 9 11 for like three it's years about of graduate dollars. Uh, <laughs> it was a credit. So, I mean, if you want to help out my fence, my fence fund. <laughs> uh, the sad thing is it probably wouldn't even cover your fence with all that gasoline you was using. <laughs> Maybe if you like manually tilled it, it would, it would help out. But yeah, it's a big garden, man. Yeah. So I got, and I was like, all through the conversation, I'm trying to make sure this isn't a scam or something. I was like, so you're telling me I just have to give you a current address and you're going to mail me a check with a comma in it? <laughs> she's like uh yeah we are i was like and i don't have to do anything else that's it i just cash it and it's mine she's like yeah it's your money it's like oh shit <laughs> so of course in adulting like by the time it gets here like mentally i already know where that money has to go and it's 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 sad how a, a few grand in your adult years like get, don't get me wrong I'm very excited it's a blessing but that money will disappear so fast it's not even funny True. And not even make a significant change to anything in my life. I know that sounds horrible, but yeah. You know, it's, hey, it is what it is. It's extra I, money. It's it's not extra. It's money you were not expecting that you've already spent. Because if you were 70%, you had to pay the other 30. And yeah. you also didn't get the 30% MBAH that you were supposed to get. Correct. So, you know, these are all funds that you already spent that they're just reimbursing you for. Sure. You know, I'll, spent, I'll take it. I spent four years as a VA certifying official. Oh, man. man I need to talk to you then. We might talk after this. <laughs> I was in charge as the VA. I was the VA certifying official at Thomas Nelson for two and a half years. I ran the department. Okay. So, so you know what I'm talking about. I do. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I also like how when they, they were checking my contact information, they had my phone number. And they never called they had. You. And they never called me. <laughs> they were like, well, we'll just send this check. And then it gets sent back. He's no longer there. They're like, well, we just going to sit on this money for a while. I was like, mm -hmm. uh-huh. I almost asked them, so am I getting the interest that y'all earned on it? Or <laughs> like, Is there going to be interest with that? I didn't go there. I'm, I'm happy enough. Very, very fortunate. So yep. I could I could buy half a, half a fence. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, personal life. I, we are coming out of the end of this COVID hell, for lack of better words. When I tell you, it took like a roll. It was a roller coaster ride of oh, I feel good. Oh, I feel like crap. Oh, I feel great again. Oh no, I feel horrible. <laughs> Let's just say I took my first walk, and you know, serious walk in about two weeks, and I got twenty minutes into my walk, and I felt like I had been out there for about an hour and a half. My pace. Mm -hmm. I had finally worked my pace down for my mile walking mile. It's about 15 minutes and 20 seconds. So really great pace. That's, that's huffing it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, today my pace was 27 minutes for my mile. Mm. Like I felt my legs felt like lead, like they were not moving. And I don't I don't necessarily say I was out of breath, but just everything felt so sluggish. It just really I was so upset. <laughs> but <laughs> you'll you'll get it back. You'll get it back. We, I, I spent almost two weeks out of work. You know, I, I ended up um, going into work a couple of days because I wasn't sure what it was. And finally went to the doctor and stopped being hard headed. And they're like, yeah, you definitely have COVID and you have a bacterial infection on top of that. Bonus. So, yeah, I ended up on two different antibiotics and all sorts of stuff from last Thursday until yesterday. 
So <laughs> it's just been super fun. Um, but needless to say, it definitely made me sit down and I, you know, finished a couple of TV series. And um, then this weekend I had it in me to go ahead and commit to something Brandon Sanderson. So the only thing that I had downloaded on my phone that was um, Sanderson's work was Skyward. Okay. And so I listened through the entirety of Skyward and then moved to Starlight already. Or Star Oh, you already me. got through one. Oh, yeah, I'm through one and I'm <laughs> on the second one. I am actually have eight hours left of the second one because... How, how is it? It... I'm enjoying it. So let's just okay. put it... I'll say that out front. Um, it very much is kind of a, I guess, adult sci-fi or adolescent mm -hmm. or young adult. That's the word I was yeah. looking for. So okay. it's definitely meant for that 16 to 20 year old. It's got a, a heroine. So, you know, she's badass. Don't get me wrong. And the story is evolving. I can say that much. At first, I thought it was super basic. And some of the stuff you could easily just like, oh, I know what's going to happen. But then every now and then he'll throw something else at you that she just didn't <laughs> expect. So it's been... It's been a good listen. I will have to okay. say that just honestly. And if you just want something to kind of pass the time where you don't have to think super hard, but you want a good story, this is that book. Gotcha. Nice. Okay. Right. Cool. Cool. And if you have young girls in your life, you know, teenage daughters that you want to get interested in sci-fi, then this will be That's the a one. Good one. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Deal. And can I ask? Since we're on this new platform, I know mm -hmm. I see in the corner that we're live and mm -hmm. it's counting up how long we're going. Is it automatically recording? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we are recording. I, I've tested it out. Yeah, no, because you can watch. I'm it. watching this on YouTube right now. Yeah, you can go back and rewatch those. So that's all. Okay. Record on YouTube and it's recorded on this program. Okay, I trust <laughs> you. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't trust you, but yeah, you should whatever. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just know we're doing this in one take and one take only. That's yes. all I'm saying. <laughs> and that's the way it's going to be. Um, that's so, the way it's going to be. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, jump into uh, this prologue since that's all we're doing tonight because it's a massive prologue. Just a simple little prologue. Uh, one chapter. Uh, yeah. No biggie. <laughs> We'll, we'll breeze through it. Everybody will be able to tune into something else in about an <laughs> hour and five minutes. We'll be done. <laughs> With half so, of it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. So, no, it um, that much to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, let's get into it. So, start with the prologue, the first message. And um, uh, chapter symbol is the Wheel of Time logo, uh, the snake and the wheel and all that good stuff. And uh, we jump right in with Demon Dread. Um, we've talked about him. I don't think we've met him yet. We've He's been mentioned a lot. Um, but Demon Dread has not. Uh, I don't think we've met him, have we? No. Not really. Yeah, I no. don't think so. He's been talked about. Don't know anything about him. Yeah. This is so we weird, by the way. Normally, it's like, all right, and pause. <laughs> all right, guys. And now we're on episode this, that, and the other chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> it's so weird. It is. But yeah, so um, we start with Demon Dread, and he's at Shao Ghul, uh, where the Dark One's prison actually is. Um, and we start to learn a little bit about, I guess, the landscape around uh, this valley that's called Thakandar. Uh, and there's a there's a river that runs through it um, that apparently is super poisonous. And there's uh, blacksmith there that are just forging weapons for Trollocs. And, and, and Brad Pitt uh, trout fishing uh, with his yeah, father. Yeah, he's out there doing the river um, runs through it. River runs yeah, through it. Yeah. It says, um, Above rolling gray clouds hid the sky, an inverted sea of sluggish ashen waves crashed around the mountain's hidden peak. Below, odd lights flashed across the barren valley washed out blues and reds falling to dispel the dusky murk that shrouded their source. Like he gives such a vivid description. It's like, ah, there's this place with this stuff. And <laughs> like, if you haven't read the prologue in a while, go back and read it again. That way you can appreciate it, the imagery. Like I always like to talk about the imagery that he gives you because he's really setting the scene for a, a horrible place. Mm -hmm. that yeah. 
you know, kind of draws a dark awe. Like if you're that type of person, which, you know, admittedly I, I am at times where you kind of love the dark because it makes the light that much better. You got to reread the prologue, at least the first couple of pages. It's, it's yeah. very ominous how he describes it. It, it also describes how the blades are being made. Like you have these blacksmiths and they, they sit, they're not even really blacksmiths. All they make is blades. Um, they can't make <laughs> anything else but blades. And then they're actually not even fully human. Like they're just kind of like these zombie type things that are just. Are these human. ones that would like turn to dust if they go too far away? I, they might be. I don't know. Yeah, it way. is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they're just making these blades, and then it says, you know, they quench it inside the water that poisons it, but then also, I guess they have to sacrifice someone with it um, as well. So they have a whole bunch of prisoners there as well. It women says and children, a, like um, a ragged woman crouched in a hopeless heap against the forged rough stone, clutching a barb in her hand, and a spindly girl buried her face in the woman's skirts, like they are literally sacrificing old women and, and young young girls for these mm -hmm. blades to be created. Yeah. And is this the same type of blade that Ballsy used to stab Rand? I was wondering the same thing. That's that's what I was thinking. I think so. Like it, it has to be the darkest of dark swords. I mean, when you're sacrificing women and children to create these blades, and it must do some serious damage. So we, I think I would seen, agree with you. We've seen before, like if a merge all blades touches someone, you know, even with Tam, like it just yeah. barely got a scrape, and you got to get healed by uh, the one power because. Uh, it was touched by one of the blades. So these blades are corrupted. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So there, so we've seen that even book one. Um, but yeah, so, but he's not there to see the blacksmith or, or, or the swords being made. He just kind of walks through and describes it. He's there to go meet with the dark one himself. Uh, and it explains that the boar is not really any one particular place. So this is where it's the weakest, um, that his prison's everywhere, uh, kind of like an omnipresent being. Um, but, um, you know, there's a, I guess a cave hole in the rocks that he can go into. And all of a sudden there's suddenly a too tall merge hall. That's way too tall. That shouldn't be that tall. Thakandar. Thank you. Let dude. me, sometimes I get, like, I totally get what Jordan's doing here. And I think like, I, I love all this prologue, but it, especially this, this opening scene for many reasons, but there's sometimes there's some things that just don't quite makes sense to me like this guy doma dread is no slump i like everything that i i pull from here like he's probably the most badass of the chosen forsaken whatever you call it, <coughs> that we've run into uh and just jumping ahead a little bit he's getting tapped for kind of a leadership role the fact that he's even here and others have tried to but can't be here like he's it, somebody significant right but then how is he going to feel like he got snubbed by a merge roll when he knows all the merge rolls are like exact carbon copies of each other? They all look the exact same, but this one's clearly different, significantly different. Mm -hmm. Like he kind of catches an ad attitude. The merge roll addresses him and is like, you know, what are you just going to loiter there when you've been called by the great Lord? And he's like, how dare this merge roll speak to me like I'm, that? Blah, I'm, blah, blah. I'm like I'm a chosen. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I get the pompous attitude he might have, but shouldn't he also either know the difference between this guy and average merge roll, or at least recognize there is a difference and go, okay, let me just, he's never seen one like this before. It's, it's odd to him, but at the same time, he's, he's above merge roll. So, um, but obviously not this guy. Uh, and the guy, right. introduced, the, the merge roll introduced himself. His name's Shadar Sh 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 Haran, uh, which actually means hand of the dark. Um, yeah. That's um, in, in old tongue, which he also points out as well, that usually Mergels sometimes did have names, but they're always in the Trolloc in tongue. In the Trolloc, yeah. And this is in the old tongue. And he says, it's really strange that one, this Mergel doesn't look right. And then two, he's too big. And then two, he has a actual real name and he's not bowing before a chosen. Uh, it's just, everything's kind of strange about this, this entity. I've gone into the home of somebody that way outclassed me. And I was going there to see this person. I did not walk into that person's home and talk shit to their help. Because the fact that you could do it was more, it's, it's great. <laughs> well, that, that's, <laughs> not, that's not exactly what I was thinking. But I mean, that's an example. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk into your father's house and like, you call me a penis was, the first time you meet my mom. <laughs> well, you are different. Uh, I did talk smack to you, but you're not, I, 
I'm saying like if if he had somebody there that was, you know, doing work on the house or, you know, yard work, something like that, you don't even disrespect the people working for the person that you're going to see, especially like, I don't know. I just got hung up on it. Maybe I'm stupid. That little- no, I mean, so before we even get started, let me let me handle this part to y'all in the chat. No, no spoilers past the prologue. So no, no spoilers. There we go. I'll put it out there too. Cause I'm seeing a lot of that <laughs> pop up in the chat. We appreciate you guys. I love all the spoilers, but we want to keep it spoiler free and you'll never hear that come out of my mouth ever again. Um, <laughs> and to go back to your point, like there is a specific reason and we don't know it yet or why this merger was pointed out and why he has the name that he does i mean it's almost more of a title than it is a name hand of the dark that that's just like brings me back to game of Thrones times when you had the hand of the king like here we have the hand of the dark like this merge is going to play an important role in keeping the chosen in line he already has authority and dominion more so than they do, seeing as the fact that Demon Dread is actually not getting the quote unquote respect from him that he expects. And as a matter of fact, it's being, you know, I'm not gonna use the word punished, but reprimanded by this merge rule and then pushed forward. It's like, all right, let's let's go. You need to you have to meet the dark one. Like you're supposed to be here for a reason, and yet you're loitering. And then we get further down in the reading and Demon Dread like demands that this merge will be lo- move, removed from his presence. And the Dark One's like, nah, he could stay right where he's at. <laughs> yeah, he's here because I want him here. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. he's got well, so status. I guess Demon Dread, like you see as this progresses, he's figuring it out. But I would I would have thought just from the physical difference, he would have at least, I don't know. Instead of being put off by it and done the ha ha ha, he'd be like, "What's going on here? What's why is, you know, one of these is not like the other? Huh. Let mm-hmm. me try to figure it out before I have this emotional response." But yeah, anyways, yeah. So I mean, let's go back a little bit. What do you think about this cave? Um, you know, as we're going through, it describes it as I'm just like teeth, you know, from the seal, like stalactites and stalagmites. Um, um, coming up from either side and normally it almost brushes his head when he walks in, but it's actually opened up wider for the merge all than it normally is last time he was there uh, in the pit of doom. Um, so what do you think well, about like this whole, so obviously it moves. So mm-hmm. do you think it actually can crunch down someone if someone else tries to enter or, you know, is it. So it's not just oh, wide enough me. now for this tall merge roll. It has enough space well above this taller mm-hmm. merge roll guy. Right. And, um, I don't have that part highlighted, but I do remember uh, there was something about how, like, the Great Lord, it, essentially, he wouldn't make it any bigger than it really needed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, something about, like, reminding people what their place is when they walk in, maybe, like, forcing them to bow or something like that. So if it's right. that much bigger, that means there's something else passing through there mm-hmm. that is that much bigger. Sure. That's my that's my guess. Well, and I mean, yeah. you also have to think of the context of what is in there that should be bigger than what it is, or could be bigger than what he actually is. Like what could be coming out eventually. We might this just imagery in of itself may be the idea that the cave metaphorically or actually is the prison that is holding the dark one, and as the disc continue to be broken and the seal on the dark one lessens in strength this cave grows and allows more of the dark one's power to pour out like we have demon dread noticing this larger um midril but um, maybe that's how big they were maybe they were bigger and stronger and more powerful in the past but because his power is only slowly seeping out he could only get but so many and so much of those mergers out. And, you know, his darkness could over only power so much. But as the seals break, more of his evil and more of his power is, of course, entering the world. I mean, mm-hmm. we know at this point he's even, I'm jumping way ahead, 
impacting the weather itself. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, when we had our Michael Bublé's of of evil, the yeah, one coming before out. we had little fire bubbles, and now we got. <laughs> so, so, what also do you think about? Like, this is the first time we actually get to, I guess, not see the dark one, but get his presence. Like, as far as you don't see him, but his voice just enters into the head and and just like pounding voice like a voice of a voice of god like kind of kind of thing yeah. yeah um so i paused for a moment and i was like well right now as much as i was getting into the whole rand thing and then our female channelers and everybody else right now there's no way our characters can stand up against a being like that like this is jordan took us from like you know trollocs to fades <laughs> to this to that to da, and, but the leap to the dark one uh, yeah. <laughs> is such a massive jump like uh very and then if he, awesome. and he was able to get out like how i mean this is this is pretty much i mean demon dread states he's like soon the blockage would soon be gone and the dark lord would reach out across the earth again soon would come the day of return not day of the, but day of return. And he would rule the world for all time. He being demon dread under the great Lord, of course. So, I mean, right then and there, we know like it's about to go down. <laughs> like stuff is, I don't know. We're on YouTube. So stuff is about to hit the fan. <laughs> and <laughs> so, and, and when we're not monetized. We, it's okay. <laughs> okay. So I said, shit's about it, fan. But um, when we read his actual statements, they're all capitalized. Like he is speaking with authority, and it's coming across in Demon Dread's mind as just this awe inspiring. I say awe because he notices it as moments of bliss and pain at the same time. Like he's felt with the filled with an overwhelming righteousness, but at the same time, he's like being physically dropped to his knees in tears. And like, I just like in my mind, it's like an erotic like, experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. also, like you're like roping a, a painful, a painful erotic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's that, what's, it's what's that combo of pain and pleasure. What's the statue in Weirdo. Rome? Um, the ecstasy of St. Teresa in Rome. Oh, there's yeah. a, there's a chapel and it's considered, uh, the church had a problem with it for the longest time because it, the way it's portrayed is this woman being, being stabbed. I think it's through the leg with the spear, but it's supposed to be the spear of God and her facial expression is not of pain, but of joy and ecstasy. And, um, and, and it's that whole entire the spear. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's a, it, it's, it's a little stabby stab. It, the, 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 the Catholic church had a problem with it when I, I think Michelangelo actually sculpted it, ecstasy St. Teresa. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's, um, uh, was was very controversial at the time of the facial expression that the statue has, but um, but this is similar to what I'm, you know, the pain and the ecstasy at the same. I time. wonder if he had well, a model, like you know, this side. is back in the day. So he's like, I want it to be authentic. Uh, find me some some girl to model <laughs> and don't tell her, but I'm just gonna stab her in the leg. And so he probably planned on doing this sculpture of some woman screaming in pain, but they <laughs> apparently picked up some freak on the street. And mm -hmm. when he walked up her and went stab, she went, Oh, <laughs> yes, daddy, give me more. And he was like, That's that's the sculpture I'm making. That's didn't see that coming, but forgot to bring the safe <laughs> object. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. So uh so Demon Dread, like he also wanted the Merdral dude to leave because specifically because he didn't want to see him have that emotional experience. Mm -hmm. So clearly he's this very stoic dude wants to show that he's like totally in control of his emotions, thoughts and everything. But he knew already going in because apparently he's been called before. Mm -hmm. He knew going in that this experience was going to like break that stoicism. He's going to have an emotional response. And like you said, it wasn't just that it was almost erotic. It was, it was weird. Right. He probably left yeah. a little spot on his pants. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah it's uh, then uh you know they asked uh the dark one asked for his report he reports that ravine is dead and that other forsaken have vanished and the dark one's like yeah you know all that stuff you know and, and reminds him what happens to traitors as well um you know and all this um 
Yeah, he specifically uh, says the chosen dwindle, Dramed, Drami, whatever, the Mandred, whatever. Mm-hmm. The weak fall away, who betray me shall die the final death. Asmodian twisted by his weakness, Ravine dead in his pride, he served well. Yet even I cannot save him from Balefire, even I cannot step outside of time. There's implications there that if you could remove yourself from time some way, then you could bring people back from Balefire. Hmm. That's how I read that, but I have one of those minds where I'm like, okay, so what's the loophole? Like, what's <laughs> right? What so aren't it's you? Not a, it's, not a, it's not a definitive. It absolutely can't be done. He's saying it can't be done because of his own limitations. Exactly. I picked, I picked up on that too. Mm-hmm. I but also picked up on the land fear just kind of disappeared. Didn't say she died. No, mm-hmm. not disappeared. At all. Which exactly. also means Moraine didn't die. She just kind just of disappeared. 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 Mm-hmm. So maybe she can reappear. Did. I think she's going to. And I know he's been on our show before, so you've met Nablus, but this is the first time we hear the word Nablus. Uh, yeah. you know, where he turns and asks, like, do you want Will to become Nablus? <laughs> Which I also fits, re- now that we've met Nablus and <laughs> we're <laughs> a part of the Great Blight, great. now all of this fits. <laughs> yeah. I even remember y'all talking about how, like, the na- his name that he goes by is pretty spoilery, and then you were like, oh, well, there's other people in the Discord that use names that are kind of spoilery but out of context like they just mean nothing and you're absolutely right, right. like until this moment it meant right. absolutely nothing to me like but i said but now that's is. but that's a that's a pretty cool <laughs> name to to get so the minute i read it especially after meeting him at jordan con i was like this fits this absolutely fits yeah like he literally is yeah. running the show from the back <laughs> <laughs> yep, so yep. i get it yeah. <laughs> He like yeah. every time we saw names, he had a whole crew around him. So I was like, okay, yeah. all of this works. Yeah. So as as delusion points delusion points out, you know, if we're talking about you know exiting outside of time, you know, is Tam going to be the one? That's uh... <laughs> absolutely. Hello, and there we go. That's why you really got to pay attention to those like early horribly recorded episodes because that's where the real nuggets are. Time traveling Tam. Now, Time here's my, my question is how is the Dark One able to is he like controlling? I know we talk about the ravens and the rats. Are those his eyes and ears in the world? Like he knows everything that's going on. How does he know? The rat, yeah. The eyes and the ears. Is it the, the rats one? and the ravens and, and, and yeah, like, all, all that stuff? But he's he and he's also getting reports. So he's getting reports from Merdral and from and from Trollocs. I mean, so he gets all sorts of information. He does. And and from Demon Dread before, because if, correct me if I'm wrong, this is not his first visit first time, there. Yeah. And, right. and <laughs> not to jump way, way ahead, but we learned that other Forsaken have been visiting as well. So it's right. Yeah. True. Yeah. right, right. Right. Um, it's a normal check-in spot. Um, and, so. then, and, and then we end this point of view with uh, the Dark One giving a message that causes both joy uh, and tears to roll down his face. So tears of joy to roll down his face. Um, so um, uh, that's how we kind of end it. Uh, and did we skip over the part about um, we, we talked about Nablus, but form? yeah, will you we use did. Balefire in my name? Like, and then it got into you. You kind of hit on mm-hmm. this, Alan, about how in the past, well, there's repercussions using Balefire. I guess you didn't get into detail, but this gives us a little bit more of that. At one point, they were just finger blasting each other left and right, both sides, and both sides were like, "Holy shit, we're ripping apart reality!" Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and without any kind of truce or conversation, they both both sides just kind of stopped using it. Exactly. So, yeah, and and it's not like either side isn't any less of an enemy to each other. It's just they realized by doing it, they could destroy everything, including themselves. Hmm. You never yeah. know what a single thread has done. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the butterfly yeah. effect. Well, it's like going back in time and instead of accidentally stepping on one bug and changing things, like, you know, you eradicate a whole species and then 
<laughs> and oh, back yeah. to Skeeto reality and everything's off. changed. Yeah. yeah. He he poured molten uh, aluminum down the ant hill, you know, to make the little cool decorative. Right. <laughs> like, this will be neat. <laughs> then you come back to reality and like there's a different empire in charge. Like Gravity something happened exist. where like, yeah, the, the plates never moved. We still have Pangea. It's just one giant continent. You're like, wait a minute, what? Malaria <laughs> never happened. Polio. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway. Black plague. So anything from this point of view before we switch over to a uh, naive? No. <sighs> that was it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Pretty we, intense. We, well, the next one's pretty intense too in a different way. Uh, because we switched over to Nynaeve and uh she's with Liana and Swan. And um they're using the item uh with Mogedian because they got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah I, of uh, course i was lapsed. really hoping they would talk more about how they captured how they well, you know they gave her fork like, fruit in the in the dream yeah i know said, that yeah, hey, but like we'll, we'll i expected them before. to like burst into a house and mm -hmm. see find someone sleeping lying. there yeah, yeah that sort of thing i was looking forward to the actual capture not just like yeah. oh they have her okay yeah great i, I was satisfied I was satisfied with this whole section. Uh, this is probably the most predictable of all the interactions uh, in this prologue, but it but it did kind of tie off the end of the last book very nicely, at least in what they have going on. Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's nice. So you were talking about the Sanderson book you were reading where um, there was a lot of things that were happening that were pretty predictable, and then every now and then he would he would throw a curveball at you. I feel like Jordan throws a shit ton of curveballs. Then every now and then, just to alleviate and make you feel a little more sane, he gives you something like this where you're like, "Yeah, that's how I thought it would happen." <laughs> so you feel like you're not a moron. But then yeah. he throws you ten more curveballs. So this yeah, was kind yeah. of like the, you know, the soft toss where I'm like, "Okay, I can hit this one." Yeah, huh. yeah. So, so they're 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 using the Adam to test out, um, you know, the the being able to use Magadian's power, and and Nynaeve suggests that Sawan try the bracelet on, and Sawan's kind of done with this, like complains, like you can't heal Stilly, like it's 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 a dumb thing. Like her like, words why, why? were, "You can't patch a hole when the whole boat's burned." Yeah, <laughs> it's a waste of time. Yes. Like. Swan has just such the pessimistic view of the world. And I get it. Like, she doesn't want to excite herself and remove herself from a new purpose. Because what we know is that the best way to make sure you don't die from being stilled is to mm -hmm. become one with your newest purpose. Like, she's yeah. gone from being, like, the head honcho, numero uno, and now she has no power at all. So she has to pour herself into the one place where she has some control mm -hmm. so that she can live. I, I, I do see the relevance and the importance in that because she definitely is important to everything we have going on. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's, she picked a good cause to keep her busy. Um, she's still trying to a hundred percent be in charge of everything, but from behind the scenes and through influencing others. And that is way more time consuming. It takes a whole lot more effort than anything she's ever done. So yeah, she's definitely got her hands full with this one. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I will say though, like Nynaeve's time isn't wasted. Like the progress is slow and there's pretty much no progress with Loghain. But she does notice, um, she says there's something torn or cut. Mm -hmm. And then she gets from Mugedian or Mugedin or... Muga, yeah. Muga Haga, Muggy, 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 Muggy. That that they used to call it severing, mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's more conversation about how, like, you know, well, back in our day, um, you know, pretty much anything could be done just shy of, you know, bringing somebody back from the dead, sort of thing. So, like, there's still hints from Magedian that it can be done, and we are getting mm -hmm. a little bit of progress. So. It's just not happening fast enough. And Swan's personality, you know, she's the moving a hundred million miles an hour type person and kind of wants things a little quicker. And yeah, which is so. funny. Mm -hmm. Nynaeve is typically like that too, except for when it comes to healing. This is definitely the one realm where she has got the most patience. 
Yeah, and a and a ton of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Um, she's always been pretty hesitant of the unknown, and once she got outside of her safe little community where she knew what her role was and everything, she was just a little bit more awkward. But in this, she just kind of dove right into it. She asked for it. She wanted it. And she had all the evidence to say low probability of success, but she's still diving into it. And yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. really be patient. So yeah, it is kind of unique for her. And I think that goes to the point yeah. you were trying to make earlier, Alan, about using the IDOM and having, again, going through her train of thought through curiosity and being really a scientist in that extent She's like, well, let's test the theory. And she removes the bracelet from her wrist and then she puts it on to Swan. Mm -hmm. And Swan's like, oh, this woman really doesn't like us. I can, I can sense it. Da, 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 but I don't feel the power. So clearly you can't fix me. Mm -hmm. and but, I, on the, I feel, but on the I, contrary, though. On the contrary. And I, I agree with like I'm, I'm I feel like at that point. Nynaeve had to have the biggest smirk on her face. Mm -hmm. like, yes. That's what I envision, and that's what I want to see when this, if this pops up in the show. Mm -hmm. It's like the yep. biggest smirk, and then she's like, but you can feel her. <laughs> and only I, I, someone I, I, who can channel. Only someone who can channel can feel her. Right. So it's not totally removed. It's not 100. You, you haven't been turned into a person who can't and never has been and never could be able to channel. You're something less than a channeler, but you're not a normal person. Exactly. You haven't been reduced to that. There's got to be something. And then while this all is happening, Elaine just comes in like Kramer from Seinfeld and just like <laughs> slams <laughs> up the door. Like, hey guys. And like, holy crap, you scared the uh, uh, shit out of us. <laughs> that's exactly how I pictured it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just busted through the door. Everybody jumping out of their seats. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah, scaring everyone inside there. Yeah. They're going to Camelin. <laughs> what? And they're not gonna send me. Oh, like scoffing about it. Yeah. But. That's right, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't invited. <laughs> yeah. Uh so yeah, um, they're gonna send a, a, a delegation to Camelin to meet Rand or try to find Rand there or something. Um, and Elaine's not invited. Um you know, and they, and she, you know, she does not believe that her mother's dead. Uh, that's one thing as well. You like, well, your mom's dead. Why would you, you know, you need to stay here to be tower trained. And, you know, and they, I guess they want to keep her from going there to send to the throne because she's still just trained left. There's a lot of, there's a lot of reasoning why they wouldn't want her to go. Yeah. Swan um, makes a good point. Uh, telling her, well, like, of course you're not going to go. Uh, I totally get that. Uh, I, what, what, caught my attention in this little back and forth is when they started talking about like who's going and how many and swans like oh my gosh you're sending nine like three would have been enough and blah 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 and I, I just started thinking that the the Aes Sedai are out of touch with what's going on here mm -hmm. like I think they still think they're the center of it all yeah, uh, they think they're the shit. They think because they send a certain number of them that the dragon should be so flattered and just be like, oh my goodness, what an honor that nine of you can. He don't give a fine. I mean, as long as it ain't 13, he'd probably worry yeah, a lot more about that. Be right? that. He is concerned about numbers, but not in the way they are. They think they're flattering him. Uh, huh. But no, not at all. Yeah. So it just kind of weird i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i think also we need to pay attention to what's running on in the background too i mean mogadine is here she's listening she's observing she's getting to know everyone she's getting to know the dynamics like mind you everybody in the room wishes she was dead but understands that she's important and they realize at the current moment they got a leash on her but at the same time you know, if she were to get away with the information, the knowledge that she has right now, the level of danger would go from here to up there. Yeah, good point. Like, I don't think they're keeping enough safeguards here to, to protect themselves from her. 
to keep her ears closed, hearing things, keep her eyes closed from seeing things that she shouldn't. There's that, what you said, but what if there's some sort of slip or what if over time as she's going through all this, she's also focusing quietly in her own mind on what she can do to escape this? And what if she finds a way and then slaps the necklace on somebody else? Which we know it can be escaped. Bada bing, bada boom. So yeah. in my mind, I'm thinking, why didn't they have her spell herself and take care of some of that? I'm sorry. Like, I know that's kind of cruel, yeah. but you know, this is war and things have to be done. Mm -hmm. The smartest thing they could have done is, you know, get rid of her, but they need her clearly. And, and she realizes that too. So, yeah. But going, going back to the whole conversation with Elaine, you know, Swan is definitely on the side of the decision that was made about not sending Elaine. She's like, you have to realize that you're the daughter heir. And though you don't believe that Rand has killed your mother, it is believable that she may be dead. And if anybody gets their hands on you, then they have Andor. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, it just makes sense for the Aes Sedai to want to keep you and train you and make you loyal and all of the things. Yeah. It, yeah. And they say and, you, and know, I, you can't trust him because he they hear about the amnesty, like that Rand's allowing men to channel to gather. Like you can't trust this guy. Like, like I know you say you love him, but I don't think that's good reason not to trust him. But that's I the reason that, that's uh, given. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Because we men definitely are not trustworthy enough to have any real power. I mean, yeah. God forbid you let us start hanging out and talking to each other, and you know getting ideas i know yeah. then we might do something crazy like create a youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> where where for half the episodes ian is sloshed and just saying ridiculous stuff i, I, I know it's an old <laughs> joke but like guys talking together is always just like not much of any content at all like there, there i think there's a stand-up community that does it too but it's so true you go play golf with your friends or something like that and like come back and your wife starts like grilling you about like so what you and doug talk about i'm like nothing, nothing. like you didn't you didn't ask about his wife and how his wife's doing i was like no i asked him if he's gonna use a seven r and r6 that was the extent of our conversation <laughs> there, there were there were times uh where alan came over uh to my house and i'm playing xbox he just messaged me he's like hey, hang a swing by i'm like cool and he'll come in just go through the front door because there's no need to knock no. and he'd come into the den there and I'm playing and he'd lay down on the couch and he'd be like, oh, I'm just going to take a nap. And that's the most we talk to each other. Then like he falls asleep. Then he wakes up and he goes, all right, I'm going to head out after like, <laughs> and that was it. That was the whole visit. That was the whole interaction. Yeah. And I don't even know if I actually looked at him because I'm playing my game and I'm like, all right, cool, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that doesn't relate to what we're reading here at all. But no, yeah. not at all. Uh, they don't want the guys to get at. together. And, <laughs> yeah, they don't want the guys to get together and be like, want to go fishing? Yeah, cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, well, yeah. Also, uh, I'm still thinking that Elaine is going to get uh, voted in as Amerlin for this breakoff group here. So Elaine? I think that's also why they, yeah, I think that's also okay. the, why they want to keep her around. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I, I still have an issue with the whole lane thing. That's too much power for one person to be, you know, in charge of the Aes Sedai and have your own kingdom. Too much. Yeah, too much. Perhaps. Nynaeve. Um, ain't no way. <laughs> no. She can't even too change much of a wild card. <laughs> yeah. Know, but she got to do something important. Yeah. Yeah. And too many eyes to die there that just don't like her. Yeah. All and the more have, reason. And have prejudice against the wild one, wild ones or whatever. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Who knows? Whoever yeah. Swan lobbies for is going to end up in there. Because she's crazy. Yeah. Right. And, but they're they're building that relationship already. They had the little tussle. They pulled each mm -hmm. other's hair. They smacked each other in the face. Popped a couple boobs. Like... Yeah, they bonded. So I feel like she's the one. And plus, 
Swan didn't have it easy. She wasn't easygoing. She didn't do what everybody told her to do. You know, this is kind of, you know, a parallel here. They're they're running side by side. She wasn't the sure. best. She just came out on top because she was scrappy. Mm-hmm. That's true. That could happen. I won't roll that out. I yeah. like it. And of course, we learned somebody else is going mm-hmm. to go visit okay. Rand. <laughs> Makes makes Elaine a little jelly, I think. Oh yeah, I when I I already knew that that was going to happen before I even read it. I was like, "Men's going to go." <laughs> in my like everything he said, men, this is finally when men hooks up with Ran. It's about mm. to go down. Well, no, no, no. I don't. Here's the other side of that, though. Who's still with Rand? Avienda. Avienda. So I feel like there's going to be like a lot of Avienda and men like tension mm. back and forth. Yeah, because Avienda is still going to defend the relationship between Rand and Elaine. And mm-hmm. she's like you keep saying she's pregnant. By the way, you <laughs> said it. And now I've got Chanel in the background going, I bet you. I'm uh-huh. like, now uh-huh. it's two of you. So Come like. On. <laughs> Come you on. Know that? <laughs> so one and done. And, and it wasn't even I bet you. Sure. Like, I went to her. After you said it, I went, hey, what do you think about Avienda? And ran. She's like, I think Avienda's pregnant. I'm like. Bam. Bam. Okay. I, didn't even, I said you and She's Ian. She's smart. You and Ian agree with each other. <laughs> She's like, well, there's something good. <laughs> so I knew there was a reason why I liked Ian. He agrees with me more than you do. <laughs> there you go. Trust me. We'll, we'll uh, find many things to disagree on. So, Yeah. Yeah. And um, we also learned that both Nynaeve and Elaine have been getting a whole lot of credit for discovering a whole bunch of new stuff. And we learned how they've been discovering stuff. They've just been torturing Magetti pretty much with the Autumn to, to, to give them all the information from Age of Legends and like rediscovering all sorts of tricks and things. Uh, and they go through a lot of those. Yeah. Um, Again, and how, predictable. And how they can utilize them. Yeah. Makes, makes sense. Like, why wouldn't you? That's exactly yeah. what I would be doing. So what do you think about all this leveling up, though? Like, I mean, they're learning so much. Do you think this is a a huge level up for all of them? Oh, sure. Uh, I think what was even more interesting is, first, they admit that, well, at least to the reader, that they're not sharing everything they learn with the rest of the sisters. They're careful, like, how much they divulge. But in doing Mm -hmm. so, they're realizing, like, as they introduce something new, they could see a twinkle in some of the Aes Sedai's eyes as if, oh, shit, Um, they already knew that, but they also did not share that with the rest of the sisters. And then all these different Aes Sedai have, like, special secret things that they can do that they don't tell anybody else about. I mean, the more I find out about the relationships of these Aes Sedai, the the more I'm glad I just have nothing to do with them. Like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so shady but le- leveling up yes but also all this bs among the eyes to die like get out of here with that shit they're not they're not they're not playing as a team at all mm-hmm. so yeah yeah definitely so yeah uh, they also learned about some dark friend plots um I like that. Wait, there's a up. question in the comments will men go yeah of course men's gonna go she's drawn like she is all about her some Rand at the moment. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she's ready to jump. Never mind. I'm not going to go that far. But <laughs> might have two babies on the way soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think there'd be plenty of babies. Uh, let's talk about the invisibility thing where one of the. Am I jumping ahead here? With. Uh... And it. so what one of the eyes that I was like complimenting about like the invisibility thing, how cool it is. And she mm-hmm. thinks like they might be able to tweak it to get rid of the shimmering. Yeah. yeah. And there's another one with the eavesdropping thing where they can talk mm-hmm. over long mm-hmm. distances. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So this type of shimmering. Does that have any relationship with shimmering we've seen before? So, I mean, I think you're talking about inverting weaves. Is that what you're talking about? So you can't see the weaves anymore? Well, I thought there was an invisibility thing, too. There might be. But, like, there was was kind of a... He used the word shimmering. Yeah. So that's why... Then I went all the way back to the original prologue and be like, okay, because he kind of shimmered when he came into view there. 
was it that he transported from somewhere else to there or he was there but invisible and then revealed himself hmm. well, oh, yeah. this is the yeah. the way you wrap yourself in light to become invisible remarkable i'm sure someone will find out how to stop the ripples oh the so ripples. you can move about with it so uh, you know that's not exactly the same shimmering i think yeah, is yeah. just that transportation but then this okay, invisibility yeah. is something different all right my my own mind applied the word shimmering that's where i got yeah. lost on that tangent <laughs> got a lot of squirrels running around here guys if y'all don't know that by now <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah, the eavesdropping thing was the one they wanted to enhance to try to figure out how to utilize it to talk over long distances and things like that. Well, I promise the I ain't dropping no eaves. What'd you say? The ability to make the ta angriol. Yeah. Like they're getting their props and they're yeah. definitely learning how to do a lot. Mogadine has definitely been a big help. She's the new Asmodian. Or the female Asmodian, however you want to put it. Like she is dropping knowledge bombs left and right. Mm -hmm. And yet the girls recognize that she's holding back. Yeah. That she still knows so much more. Well, and then they won't use compulsion. Like, I, so I understand. Like, you don't want to take some mice free will from them because you you think you're sure oh, they're going to use it. You don't and the use whole disguising yourself to like change your appearance and everything. Uh, they're going to use it all. It's going to happen. I mean, it's not that Yoda couldn't use force lightning. It's just that you don't want to touch the dark side and use the dark side powers. You know, there's a certain limit to the powers. You limit yourself, uh, <laughs> which is why the Jedi are disadvantaged at the Sith. Cause the Sith actually uses the light and the dark side. People don't realize that they use both sides of the force. Well, that's why you, you need the gray. Yeah. Well, yeah. the gray, the, yeah, the gray, gray use both sides, but don't give into the dark. That's correct. But, yeah. That's the balance. That would be me. <laughs> I would take if, if any other chosen could be as emo as Asmo, it's Mogi. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, I like it. But so, I mean, the idea of not wanting to use compulsion again, like I get it. You don't want to strip somebody of their humanity. I mean, I've read a number of books and number of things. And the biggest thing about being human is the ability to have free will to make decisions and to make choices. But this whole book is about lack of choices. Let's just be real. The will we it's about saving <laughs> it's about saving all of existence. <laughs> this isn't like trying to win a little battle, a tiny skirmish. So someone it's was about talking, winning the last battle. And, and not <laughs> not to compare apples to apples, but like I remember there was an argument going on on, on some uh online forum a while back about Game of Thrones versus Wheel of Time. I was like, and someone was trying to explain Wheel of Time to like some Game of Thrones fans. And it's like, it's a lot like Game of Thrones, but the stakes are a lot high, higher. They're like, what? Like how are they higher? It's like, well, and the other thing is just fighting over a throne. Like you're fighting for everything. You're fighting for like time itself. Like it's like, yeah. like, like existence. <laughs> like the yeah. stakes are If you get finger so blasted hard enough, not only will you disappear, but everything you did or touched or affected in the last day, week, month, depending on how hard they blasted you. Yeah, gone. Yeah. And and looking at the chat, because I can't help myself. Yes, Egwene is definitely opposed to torture. She's a healer. ASMR. So. Snacks. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, oh, speaking of which, I had an ice cream. I think I left it on the counter, and that was an hour ago. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Is Egwene opposed? I mean, she's a healer. So, yeah, she's opposed to torture. She's not going to do it. I mean, she even had the opportunity to kill Mogadine. I would have done it. She would have been gone. That's one mm -hmm. less enemy to worry about. Like, the minute I caught her with the eye dom, I would have said, all right, now I want you to put a bubble over your head. Now I want you to drain it of all air. And I want you to breathe deep. And mm. then exhale. Yeah. <laughs> like... It would have been I mean, they, they they did a, they did the better the better route of actually keeping her alive. I, mean, I think so. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, yeah, it makes more sense to keep her alive. They get to use her. You know, it makes more sense because they don't want to hurt other people. But you know, at the end of the day, I, I just I'm praying that it doesn't come back to bite them. But mm -hmm. everything in me says it's going to. Yeah. Yep. 
where are we at in this book? Uh, we're pretty much past the uh, part with information. They, didn't they learn about dark from, dark from plots? Oh, I thought um, we were talking about men going. And then we talked about men going. There was a whole little conversation, the awkward moment between men and Elaine and thought we're not going to let a guy get in between us. I think all girlfriends have that conversation. Like, you know, we're always going to be each other's best friend and we're never going to let a guy get in between us. And then that one guy comes along and it's like, hmm, ain't he fine? Yeah, girl, he got a nice butt. You like his butt too? Yeah, I like it. All right, well, he can't get between us. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Who's Little did they first? know. I mean, it happens. Yeah. yeah. So after this, we switch to Elaine's point of view. We're still in the same location. It's just now outside the room. Uh, anything from this before we switch over to Elaine? Nope. I kind of already went there. Yeah, okay. There's so yeah. much. We could spend an hour on each one of these little I perspectives, know. <laughs> but we hit the highlights. Yeah, so we go there. Elaine waves to Brigitte, uh, who is trying to play with the two boys that came with Megedian. Uh We learned more about that. There's just some refugees that Megedian picked up to try to keep her disguise going. Didn't we say um, that Morgedian was one of those two? Yep, yep. yep. The one with the kids. We yes. called it. We called yeah, that one. You did call that one. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, because Mageddon if says- I was trying to infiltrate, that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> Like you mm-hmm. might not be able to play on the heartstrings just enough, just by being this like, oh, I'm a stranded woman. But man, you got two like kids whose dad got whacked in the war. Like, come on, that's mm-hmm. that's yeah. a ticket to ride anywhere, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, it helped with disguise. Uh, and Gareth Bryn comes by, um, and Elaine remembers that she has heard about him recruiting the Hulse army, and you know. Um, has a little interaction. Yep. Uh, I think I breathed through that in my mind. Yeah. No, I, that's what I was going to say. That was just a quick reminder that he was there and doing stuff. Yeah. And she run- he really yeah. was not connected to her mm-hmm. at all. He's, he's past her mom. He's like, yeah, that, that trick, like that, you know, she's, she's out of my mind. I have a new focus now. Where's Swan? I want to check in on her and make sure she's doing my laundry. Like, mm-hmm. good excuse to go take a look into those big blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then actually, as she's moving through the crowd, she runs into a, a couple of Aes Sedai, Anaya and Janya, who are praising her and proud of all her discoveries. And they think it's marvelous that she's been able to make Tangriel. Um, yeah. And that no one's been able to do that since like the age of legends. And it's crazy that she's been able to figure this out. Um, well, yeah. So why is it like good cop, bad cop sort of thing? It's like, there's one that's buttering her up and praising her. And the other one that's like doing the elbow, like, all right, that's enough. Come on. You know that shit go to her head sort of thing. Like, I think they still want to keep her in her place. <laughs> yeah. But they're doing Elaine and Inive are doing what no other Aes Sedai has been able to do in thousands of years. Don't you can't say no other Aes Sedai. They're not Aes Sedai yet. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. They're doing ex- more than what the White Tower Aes Sedai have been able or to any do. Aes Sedai have done right in, in quite some time. So I don't know. Yeah, it's like. It's an example. Like, what if you're sitting in a math class and you have this really ornery professor and they're just hammering you about some basic shit that it's the same shit that's been taught for so many years. And every now and then you keep popping out these new proofs and theories. And then he looks at it and goes, damn, that's right. Damn, that's right. How many times you got to do that to realize I should be teaching this class? Yeah, I don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, what else? What else do you have for me? I you stopped know, right? listening to my mom by the age of 13 because I just knew. Like I yeah. got you. <laughs> like All right. I go to work right now yeah. and make more money than you. Yep. yep, yep. <laughs> because I understand the way this world works a lot better than you do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel um, like we gotta be teetering on that. Gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's gonna be some more tension coming up with that in the next com- coming chapters or in this book? Definitely. I mean, it, it was already there. You, we skipped over it, but you had the conversation that Nynaeve was having in her own mind about how she missed the clothes that she wore. Mm 
mm-hmm. that she's back in the accepted gown with white with strips of different colors when she felt like she should already be there. Mm-hmm. And then you have a Gwen who clearly wants to go home, like she wants to be with Rand, like she's at a point where I think they're Elaine, both at yeah. a point. Or Elaine, Elaine sorry. Yeah. They're both at a point where they realize and understand that there is a lot they can learn in the sense that they don't have the control that the others do. They don't have the basics down. But Mm -hmm. on the other side of that, they know so much more and they have so much greater power than the others do that it's like, do I really need to be an Aes Sedai or can I just make it on my own at this point? Because if the power is going to overwhelm me, it would have already because I'm using more power than anybody else does. Well, this, this is how Swan gets her influence back. Swan convinces the others that they really need to put Nynaeve or Elaine, one of them into this leadership position. Um, because Hey, Hey ladies, eventually they're going to recognize, well, one, we should recognize that they're just doing amazing shit. And they're more powerful. Like if they took any one of us on -on one-on-one right now, we'd be in trouble sort of thing. So there's a way to convince them that, hey, in order to keep that power, at least on our side, where we can somewhat still direct it, we put one of them in charge here. Mm -hmm. But Swan still has some trump cards over Nynaeve and Elaine, the biggest one, this Mogidian shit. Um. So, like, if she could negotiate getting them in one of those positions of power, she would have more influence and control. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I get, I get, I could see that's something Swan would do here. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. And of course, Elaine is moved to the crowd because she's trying to get to men because she wants to talk to men before she leaves um, and finds her uh, near the river Eldar, uh, about to leave to head up to Camelin. Uh, and they talk about Swan and, and uh, they both confess, confess they both love him uh, and mm-hmm. neither wants to give him up. How sweet. Just, um, yeah. Um, but they also don't want to risk their friendship and lose each other. So, oh, <laughs> now they're like, okay, who's this third chick? So they go there to try and find like a common enemy enemy if you will something they can like easily agree on like all right well we'll both like kind of not like this third person but they still never really answered the question they didn't ask the hard questions they didn't answer the hard questions like all right what if min goes there and knocks the boots with ran what's that going to do to the friendship mm-hmm. i mean it's mm-hmm. there's potential ran's a ran, ran's a man now mm-hmm uh, yeah, maybe Elaine was just okay with stealing a couple kisses here and there in tear, but Min just seems like the type. Not that she's a hussy or nothing like that, but she seems like the type. Like, uh, you know, if she knows what she wants and and the opportunities there, and you know, consent given and all that jazz. Sure, she gonna <laughs> take care of business. Then what? Yeah. Do you think the friendship will survive that? Yes. Okay. I think first off, like they, they've come to the conclusion that it's gonna happen and it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. And men is not like at the current moment the others in the sense that she's just like, I'm gonna accept fate because I see fate. It just is what it is. We can't control it. The will weaves. Yeah, she doesn't fight it as much as the others. No. And then mostly because of her gift. Elaine is diplomatic. And Mm -hmm. she's seen this type of behavior all of her life. I mean, look at her mom. Her mom entertained men. I mean, she's even mentioned it like, you know, I you know, my mother's an older, more mature woman. I, you know, I've got my youth and my looks and this and the other. I should be able to do as I please. Like she's kind of alluded to it when talking about Tom. Mm. So I think she's kind of used to this mindset that those that are in power kind of take liberties. Mm. 
one okay. of which is their relations. Well, we're we're gonna find out. So I, I think I, men's gonna get there and mix it up a little bit. And I don't doubt that. But the other side of that is <laughs> men is DTF. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Great. You know that went through my head, and I was like, "All right, can't say that." What's another way to dance? But around you got to. You're missing the third piece of it, though. You still have Avi and until Avi again Enda gets the okay from Elaine, she's gonna cock block hardcore. That's true. That's like her true. bed is literally three feet from Rand's. Mm. Mm. I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm going to be mad if this prologue like touches on all <clears> these <throat> things and then the rest of the book is about nothing but brand new characters and a whole other time and place. Maybe it's a parent book. It's all about uh, a men shack with Rand. That's the rest of this book. It's just men Yeah, right. Rand. It's a just a dirty, raunchy romance <laughs> novel. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm going to take a pause and, and go back to personal life real quick. I just got a message from a teacher friend from that I used to work with just a few months ago. And it's like, I just want you to know we're doing testing. It's extremely rough. I'm exhausted. I would love to be able to take medical leave for the rest of the year. That's how <laughs> bad it is. We miss you. Oh, I'm like, oh, I don't miss that, but I do miss <laughs> them. They're, like she's asking, yeah. I need tips on these kids because they're horrible. They moved from your class into my class. They're creating chaos. I'm like, tell your administrator. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, back to this. This is one of those moments where like. She's engaging with an unauthorized employee. Tell her that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that. Like, at this point, I threatened HR, and I think I might actually have to go talk to the employee work commission because I still have not been paid for that time. Oh, that's crazy. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> oh, right. the real world. So I would in, much rather be in a world where I could, you know, use magical powers and have three <laughs> wives. And I don't understand why Ram would want to do that. He has a hard enough time understanding women, period. And now he's talking about his love interest with three different women. Mm -hmm. You know what? If that were a woman doing that, we'd be calling her all sorts of hoes and whores. Rand's a man whore. He so yeah. also happens to be like the most powerful being in the book at the moment. Well, which brings me to the point: how much, how weak is he in comparison to the Dark One? Right now, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he's anywhere close. I think potential. I still don't think by himself, even reaching his greatest potential, can handle it. I, yeah. I, I think it's got to be all of them kind of working together at their greatest potential. Okay. I mean, it's it's going to take like all of humanity and all of existence to somehow get on the same page in fighting this. Okay. It's going to be all about Bella. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to ride in on Bella. Bella! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. We have that. See, there's benefits coming to YouTube. We, we can do this stuff. Right. <laughs> and thank you, Way the Leaf, for that. Um, that is the Way the Leaf uh, that created that uh, uh, wonderful um, video and montage. <laughs> Every time I dance, I've heard it so many times, and I just start dancing and screaming along with it. <laughs> all right get us back uh, on track where are you all right but so uh yeah so that's kind of the end of this point of view uh anything else from this before we switch to uh the character that chris has desperately been waiting so long to hear from yeah i don't have anything else from there all right so just the fight yield well, Which let me Perrin tell you, default? I read like Perrin Golden before I even read the chat, the, the paragraph. I saw the name Perrin Golden Eyes, Lord of the Two Rivers, and I'm like, Yes, finally, Perrin. Yes, he's and then I'm like, Oh, you suck, Jordan. Yeah. You... Okay, Jordan. That being okay. said, though, I like File and I like the way she handled this, so we can go yeah. there. 
Yeah. So if I is holding court in the afternoon in the manor house, that's not quite finished yet. Um, cause they're trying to just discuss normal day to day type things. Um, and we learn later this is on where I that... like to start by saying, yeah, I'm going to interrupt you. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Fayil is holding court. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What she has been against for how many years? Yeah. And then she gets married. Try to run from this kind of lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And then boom, it's like, all right, now you, you're the only one that knows how to do it. So you marries a it. blacksmith, not a king, not a prince or anything like that. A blacksmith. And here she is holding court. <laughs> yep. Is she Tavirin? Huh. No. Nah. Or did she get Tavirin into it? She got yeah, Tavirin into, into it. it. Yeah. I don't even think it was mm-hmm. Tavirin. I think um somebody yeah. laid the hammer really well. And it's it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that Perrin's not here, but it also explains that Perrin doesn't want to be there because they don't want to pass judgment on people he grew up with. Uh, so he's kind of deferring or uh, delegating that to Fayil uh, to, to to speak on his behalf. Um, yeah. Which yeah. makes sense. Um, so, so everybody's coming in with their complaints. So you got... Can I, can I read what I sent you? Sure. The... um. There was, what's it called with the constant consonants, the alliteration? Alliteration, yeah. I don't know if you pe- picked up on it, Chris, but when he started talking about the pheasant feathered fan and like the next few sentences, it just kept going. So I'm bored. I'm bored as I'm listening to it and I'm I'm going uh, going down the road and I pause it uh, and I, I voice texted Alan and I was like, five, five pheasant feathered fans, fanning falcons, frowning faces, 15 followers, frantically fight in front of Fael, which is literally what happens in the next few paragraphs. (laughs) Yeah. It stands out more as you're listening to it. Like Mm -hmm. just a lot of F's coming up here. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Didn't even notice that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, as it, uh, Charmin Zephyr and Ray Alvin have come in to ask which of them have a right to will a scene, uh, there, you know, there are all these little squabbles that are going on and, um, you know, Fayil's just like, let the wisdoms handle it. <laughs> it's women's circle business. Uh, I don't have time for this. Um, and then we get our old village grumpy man. <laughs> comes <laughs> Sin Billy. You know, People make the argument that capitalism <laughs> is destroying America and blah, blah, blah. And capitalism is a problem. The problem isn't capitalism. The problem is when corporations or businesses try to get the government to intervene on their behalf and essentially the government pick winners and losers. And this is what he's trying to do here. He's not really mad about these people coming in here. He's mad about how it's affecting his business. And now there's other competition and now there's tile versus thatch and da, 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 da. So instead of letting the people with their own money make the decision to pick the winners and losers by like what they choose to spend money on, he's trying to get the local government to influence the situation to help his business. And that's fucked up. (laughs) That's the problem in America. Corporatism. Corporatism. Versus capitalism, yeah. <laughs> Bingo. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and he's he's definitely using corporatism. He's trying, you know, to, to use mm-hmm. his influence of being on the, hey, the council. He put it on. <laughs> to get too. He, he came in on his cane, and he, you know, oh, my goodness, can you believe this? And can you believe that? He tried to use a little bit of, try to really slyly grease Fayel up. He slips up with talking about how the foreigners and mm-hmm. like, you know, I am one of those like, yeah, I mean, long to you people. Like, yeah, <laughs> he really <laughs> went in strong he's, with he's, the, these outlanders in their strange ways. You know, you know, I'm an outlander. <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, even in the current status of the world, we see all these parallels to what, was happening when Jordan was writing this book and then he incorporated it into the book. It's like, do we literally continue to repeat the exact same cycles over and over and over again? And when the hell are we going to find our way out? Like I, you know, I guess that's the moral of this entire series is like the, the wheel is is cyclical and we're going to keep in it until finally somebody breaks free of it. Maybe is that the goal? Are you proposing a new world organization? 
you know, we're on YouTube and we're live, so I'm gonna go back <laughs> to the <book. laughs> They got, the, got the guy, the guy, the black Alec suit outside. We edit. got him. We got him. <laughs> Alec can't edit. Sit him so. in. <laughs> you see the door bust up behind Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Silence him. <laughs> But I, I do enjoy this, the back and forth banter that we see Fael having to put up with going back to the ladies and how, you know, they're trying to determine who should have control over the man. I mean, does anybody really have control over another person's body? <clears throat> and then we have this whole back and forth, like you said, about, you know, my company's being hurt because we're essentially outsourcing our work to somebody else and they're, mm-hmm. you know, using different materials but you know it, it shouldn't be that way that's not the way it should be that's not the 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 way of the two rivers it's all just we've always rode horses get these steam engines out of here <laughs> dag nabbit progress <laughs> messing up my business but i love Fayel's response which kind of shows that there's still real people out there she's like huh we chose to go with you and our roof still isn't done. Yeah. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong person. Maybe I need to go look into Let's this, go new, with this tile. new tiling. And he's like, oh, let me get out of here. <laughs> so, uh, great point. I should have yeah. said this up front. I love how Fael handles every single one of these situations. She reads between the lines. Uh, with everybody that comes up and complains and this, that, and the other. She calls people out on their BS where they need to be called out, but not in a totally disrespectful way, just enough to kind of, you know, nudge them in the right direction. Um, pretty smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And g- going back to the whole technology thing, just a little little fun tidbit, because uh, I love this aspect of, of history, is uh, when the can- cannon was first invented, the first person they tried to sell it to was Constantine, the I can't remember which one it was, of uh, Byzantine, uh, Constantinople. And he balked and said, We're not gonna spill this money. It costs way too much to make them. Our walls are strong enough. We don't need this crappy new technology. And he turned around and sold it to the Ottomans. Well, now Istanbul is uh what's what's Constantinople? <laughs> Cause, yeah, because because uh, I mean literally that's why they change it. I can't say. Well, you I can just tell like you. it better that way. I can tell you it's because they sold the cannons to the Ottomans, and the Ottomans are like, well, yeah, we'll take it on the walls. Here, boom, 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 walls are done. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's why. Yeah. <laughs> um well it's lots of other reasons too but that's a big faux pas in history talk about just technology where it's yeah yeah sometimes (laughs) um so yeah um but yeah so i mean towel versus thatch and and files kind of you know says yeah we'll do thatch but you guys get you know hurry up and finish or we'll go with tile um so get to it Yeah, you should be more focused on running your crew than coming in here complaining about you got work to do. You know, you can't be making money. Get to it. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And more petitioners come in, you know, about herbs and cures directed to the women's circle and a couple other things, dispute our boundaries. Um, You know, um, just just an array of things. So I don't know if anything kind of perked up there that you guys want to discuss, but. There's, it's just basically just petitioner after petitioner, petitioner coming in. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, she does a good your, job. Well, so she started the taxation mm-hmm. in the two rivers. Right. So she really is establishing a kingdom, mm-hmm. so, which is something that they haven't had since Menethrin, to be right. honest with you. Mm-hmm. So she's kind of reestablishing the new Menethrin under Perrin. So and it's a far stretch. Maybe we got some of that right. Maybe we are getting the revival of Manethrin, just not the way we wanted it. Mm-hmm. Because she realizes that she's making promises and they're growing the people and more people are pouring into the two rivers. So she's going to have to create infrastructure. So we see Fayil's upbringing really coming out. And I think this is where the benefit of having a father that was a general and a tactician and really a creator comes into play rather than just a king 
because she sees the gaps that Perrin will never see. Mm -hmm. And she has the authority of really her own authority was her husband's name, but it's her own, you know, verbalization of what needs to happen. And she's, Mm -hmm. she will be the one to create this kingdom here. Okay. And we know that's going to come to fruition. I mean, I don't want to skip too far and ahead. And Perrin's so. okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Perrin, Perrin has literally been like literally behind the curtain, listening to everything going on and kind of snickering like, yeah, she's got to deal with all this. And I get to sit back and just, yeah, she's doing a great job. I'm going to make sure I give her her props when she comes back here. And, you know, I got to make sure she knows how much I appreciate her. Because at the end of the day, this is all her work, and I get to sit back yeah. and do what I want to do, which is be out mm-hmm. of people's faces. Like he's the ultimate introvert, right? And she's that extrovert who is kind of getting drained at this point. So she's kind of like over it, and then all of a sudden, the women's circle walks in. And it's like, ugh, not the yeah, women's bo- circle, but a group of. Of Wisdoms. women, yeah, and, and they're you know talking about how boys have run off because of stories they've heard from Perrin, and they're saying they're frightening people, and and the weather's unnatural, and Fayil's like, yeah, you guys are two rivers people though, you guys, you guys got this, you guys are fine. So like my um, husband's always talked about how great y'all are, and by the way, you're talking about Perrin and all the stories he's telling. How about I hook you up with a a, de- a lunch date with him? You can discuss <laughs> these things with him. <laughs> and make him shut up, and maybe you can even make him do his job, so I can not have to do his job. Let, and, let me put you on his calendar. Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me take care of that for you. They're like, no, 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 we're good. We'll deal with you. I yeah. mean, I, so this is where I really got concerned, though. The fact that our wisdoms are not able to hear the wind. Mm, yeah. So in this what I started to ascertain is those people that were in touch with the one source, but hadn't really learned to control it are being blocked from it at this point. Mm -hmm. So then my thought went as far as going, well, as the dark one gains in power, how much more will he be able to block the women from their part of the power? Will he be able to block other eyes to die? Like, I don't, I honestly don't believe he'll be able to block Nynaeve and Egwene and so you think Elaine. He's block, you think he's blocking them? Well, I mean, they can't hear the wind anymore. That was really the only way they were channeling is by kind of Chris, getting in touch with the wind. Have you ever truly experienced with a a good storm coming. Have you ever experienced the calm before the storm? Yes. That's how I took it. Um, I think it's much more pronounced when you're sailing on a boat because it's not just, you stop feeling the wind blowing for a second, the boat that was, you know, at an angle of the wind, you know, kind of lean into the leeward side goes flat and all the sails luff. So there's Mm -hmm. a rocking motion. You come flat, you hear the sails luff. There's a moment for you to look up and go, wait, what's going on? And then you see the storm. You see that next line of wind coming, which is usually going in the opposite direction. So you're about to get fucked. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I took this as the calm before the storm. And the proper response to that is you look up with a stoic face and go, white squall. White squall. (laughs) 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 Yeah. You know, I, much. I get that. So you're saying it's not that they're blocked from the powers that it's about to go down. Yeah. Which I, I will say this out loud. Chanel's on like chapter here. I'll take a look at the chapter she's on. Chapter nine now. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. So when she got to chapter two, she's like, it's about to go down. <laughs> When I walked in the door today, she's like, it went down. Like, it is going down. And I'm like, I have a month and a half before I catch up to you. <laughs> oh, man. She's like, no, no, not catch up. You have a yeah. month and a half to get to where I'm currently at. And by the time you get to where I'm at, I'll be on the, the next, next book. book. I'm like, shit. 
<laughs> this is why like i i'm at a point now where i don't want to watch tv with you i don't like like i don't want anything to do with you you are ruining my future marriage alan I just put that out there. Like, we, i have started a whole new book i put my earbuds in before i walk in the door i come in i give her a kiss i sit on the couch and i sulk as i listen to sky what Skyward now a whole other book and she's sitting there like <laughs> reading through the book I'm like <sighs> like I'm so happy that right now I have the book because I slowed her down by a night yeah <laughs> I looked yeah. at her and said I even looked at her but I walked in the door before I even walked in all the way I said you know what happens tonight she's like you record I was like so you know what that means she's like you're taking the book I'm like yep <laughs> <laughs> my only little bit of payback. My rep- I even mentioned <laughs> buying another copy of the book just so I didn't have to take it, and I decided not to buy it. Boom. And she's not listening right now, so I can say that and not get in trouble. Well, with that, with that little tidbit of it goes down in the next couple of chapters, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again: calm before the storm. Yeah. <laughs> it's about to go down. Yeah, yeah. And then Fayil goes outside and sees Perrin. Um, and parents watching Tam and Aram practice the sword, and we talk about yeah you know, where the tinkers are going to go and outside uh, or upstairs on like their balcony. I guess didn't they have like some yeah. third floor balcony that he was sitting on? Yeah, Ooh, I guess that's a lot cooler yeah. than him being outside. Like Good she's point. down there but doing business outside. and he's chilling on the balcony, just watching shit happen from yeah. a distance. Yeah, yeah but he's like outside that. on the balcony. Yeah, yes. But he's watching yeah. Tam and Aram practice. Yeah. Um, it's all a comment that I'm petty. I just want y'all to know. Chanel knows I'm petty. I'm the ultimate petty. I admit <laughs> it. I own my petty. All my booze. <laughs> but yeah, going back to this. So, and this is in one of those moments where we have pettiness coming from Perrin. Because he could have gone down there. He could have taken over. He could have done what he has kind of positioned himself to do. Whether he meant to or not. He has become, you know, the young lord. He is becoming a king, a ruler. And this is part of his responsibility to hear the people and to make sure things are happening as they should. Mm-hmm. So he yeah. he has tasked his wife with this because he doesn't want to deal with it. That that's quite quite petty, to be honest with yeah. you. Well, but there's we, that. And what we're about to find out is He's being drawn. He's, he's and he's always kind of known that he's not going to be able to settle down <coughs> here. It was weird for him to be in charge of these people that he just used to live amongst, and and that all made sense. But I think deep down he knew that his job elsewhere was not done. Mm-hmm. Once he made it back and did what he could to, well, you know, he wanted to help his family, and that didn't exactly work out. But help the town, and the town is prosperous. And then he put himself in a position where other people can fill in and take charge. And he just sat and watched. And now that he's sitting back, that's why I like the imagery of being up in the balcony. Like he probably could, if he wanted to like here down below, like Fail hearing people and handling all of that. He's looking out across the town. He's seeing, all right, the construction's happening. Commerce is starting to happen. I'm looking down here. Tam's still doing a fantastic job. And in his mind, he can feel comfortable leaving which is about to come up here and he can make that transition and get out of there mm-hmm. so yeah. i don't think it's i don't think it's just being petty I, th- I think it's i feel like he's always known he's going to get drawn away from this and he feels rain tugging on him i mean yeah. just that yeah. tavir tug uh and that he needs to leave something's going on and he needs to get back to rand and he tells it to Fael. I mean, he says, I got to leave the two rivers. I want you to stay. Um, you know, when the Lord leads, the lady needs to stay to, to rule over the kingdom and makes a good argument, but she's not having any of it. She's like, nope, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of a scenario where he leaves and she stays. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'd be floored if that idea. happened. Now, I do think it's cool that she brought new technology to them. I'm trying to find exactly where I was talking about it, where she brought um, irrigation. Irrigation. Did we yeah. talk about mm-hmm. that already? Did I miss that. Part? We we have, we didn't talk about that, but yes, we kind of breezed over it. Yeah. Well, when the when the ladies were talking about the absence of water and mm-hmm. whatnot, yeah. 
And the weather changing. The irrigation no stuff, snow, so. the, no breaking of the heat. You know, and then she also mentions something that I really, I caught on to it earlier on, and it was, we talked about it before, but parents' temperament. And, you know, that, I guess it doesn't surprise me because I can be the same way at times. Like when I get overwhelmed and shit gets super stressful, I go into like defensive attack mode, if that's even a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing. I was married to it. <laughs> I hope I'm not that bad. I know I'm not that bad. I, I am a very well, I am very aware of myself. So I I stay away from it. But you know, stuff gets to a point where it's like, I need you to do exactly what I say, exactly how I say it, period. Or else I don't need you. Like go away. You're wasting my time because I could do it better on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's not a positive space to be in. It's not a good mindset. So I know there's been conversation probably six, seven, eight months ago about the relationship between parent and Fayil. And I just say, I hope that doesn't evolve into anything more. I hope it kind of just remains on the outskirts, but it doesn't turn into like domestic issues. And if it does, I hope, she drops parent as much as I love him. He's my boy. You know, I hope yeah. that she makes the decision she needs to for herself. And it's like, all right, I'm taking the kids, the pups, and we're leaving. Yeah. 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 And that's how we end this point of view is with, um, you know, the, the arguments pretty much being shut down that fail is going to go with parent and parent needs to go to rant. Yeah. Do you think Aram's going to go too? That's a good question. Yeah. Or will they leave the Aram to be here to help take charge of things? No, the last time we had Perrin actually in a book before this, um, was that Shadow Rising? And that, anyways, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like Aram was constantly following Perrin around, was mm -hmm. just constantly on his heels. Um, and Aram, he's not training with tam just to get better with the sword like i like i think he wants even more to put it in action so if there's a chance to leave and take the fight somewhere else versus just sit there and wait for somebody maybe to attack and defend yeah he's he's gonna go yeah mm -hmm. sounds good so anything for all this nah i think we've okay. covered it well enough Tam is still the so man. As always, Tam, Tam, Tam is about to. Tam. If if they both leave, he's going to be running shit. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. So, being that we're about at a halfway point right now, guys, we are going to take a quick. Let's do ten minutes. That okay. work, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll do a quick ten minute break. I'll put something on, um, like a counter a t countdown. Uh, and we'll be back in ten minutes or so to finish up the rest of this prologue because we're. It, we still have a lot left, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I needed to refill ice and use the restroom. So um, we'll be back in just a little bit. So, all right. Yeah. So what do we do? Uh, do they still see us? Yes.
See. All right, I think I'm working. Yeah, we're we're back. We're back. There we go. All right, cool. All back. Everything's good. All right. Um, I got it. All right. We dropped in viewership. Oh wait, that yeah, that happens when you take a break. <laughs> it's all good. We'll just get right back into it though. Um, so you guys ready? Yeah. All Let's right. do it. All right, and I, I had music actually on that video, and then it didn't play, so I don't know what's going it, on. It, it played. Just, no, I I had to add the extra music that they have in Streamyard at Streamyard at yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I, I worked around it. So. Anyway, um, Gawain Tricant, our good friend Gawain, who Ian calls me, which yeah, Alan is Gawain. I, I, I see what you did there. I like Gawain, though. I, I, so I, far. <laughs> he killed Hamar, Hamar and... Yeah. Uh, so? Okay. Like <laughs> so you have Gawain, you know, dragging a little pebble on the top of a hill. Um <laughs> You know, they're 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 getting prepared to fight um you know with the younglings, I guess the Aiel. Uh they're somewhere between Kyrian and Tarvalon. Uh they've left, they're they're heading that way. Um I guess uh with you know with the Shido approaching. And and the Aes so, Sedai clearly don't give him a lot of information. It's just like last second, hey, we're gonna go to this meeting real quick. Come on. Yeah. So he doesn't really know what to expect. And even kind of comments on, you know, leave it to the Aes Sedai to just kind of come up with something like this last second. Mm -hmm. Only Aes Sedai would wait until the last minute to tell a man about a thing like what was to happen today is the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the Aes Sedai clearly don't trust him that much, but they see him and his group of younglings as useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, the, and these wise ones from the Aiel are approaching the Aes Sedai. Um, and... and you know, they had Corin, one of the one of the Aes Sedai, had told uh, Gawain to keep his mission, swear to keep his mission secret. You know, uh, or what they were doing. So, um, you know, it's six Aes Sedai are with them, uh, and they're going to ask the Dragon Reborn to accompany them back to the tower. <laughs> uh, and the younglings are an escort of honor. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about all this? I mean, you said good luck with it, but what do you think? What do you think? How do you think this is going to go if, if or when they get to Kyrian and meet with Rand, if Rand is even in Kyrian? Hmm. I mean, they're making deals with the Shido now. Mm hmm. So, that's not going to help it. Gawain within this section is catching rumor about his mother and sister dead and Rand's to blame. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to help it. Mm -hmm. Rand clearly doesn't trust where he know. He doesn't trust anybody coming from the tower. Because he knows too much about what's going on in the tower. Correct. That ain't going to help it very much. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Another big fight. I'm wondering, I'd have to look at a map. What are the odds of... All right, so let me go back to the map. Mm -hmm. Of Gawain running into his mom before he runs into Rand? 
there's that, or what if this party of Aes Sedai runs into the other party of Aes Sedai? One's going to Cainlin, <coughs> and the other's going to Carian. <laughs> but where are they? I got to draw lines to see if there's a chance they intersect, because that would really be the best fight. If, is if, so, so who are you looking for? If, all right, so right now we're leaving Tarvalon, right, and heading to Carian. Uh, and then we have the other Aes Sedai and Salad, Saladar, Salad? Saladar, which is, if you look at between, uh, Amadicia and Altara, um, there's Saladar's right there in between them. So it's south to the west, but not all the way west. It's like, and they're going to Camelin. So I guess they wouldn't really, they wouldn't cross paths. Yeah. And the Tarvalon to Kyron's a lot shorter. A right. lot longer road. Okay. Well, then never mind. Because that would have been cool if those two parties crossed paths. Because then you would have Gawain and his younglings against mm -hmm. Gareth Bryn and his army. And then they'd all have their different but eyes to die at their back, sort of shit. Gawain and Gareth Bryn who know each other. Yeah. Well, all the eyes to die would know each other. Too, but then, but, like, yeah. Gareth would be like, Your sister's still alive. Sure. So that was starting to dispel some things. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't feel like it's in Jordan's writing style for these grudges to be held for too long. Okay. So you think you think Gawain's going to find out soon? Gawain's going to find something out. And the, the something okay. is the question. And I, I that's where I don't know. Like, part of me, we know that the Tarvalon, Aes Sedai are making their move. We know mm -hmm. the Saladar, Aes Sedai are making their move. We also know that like White Cloaks are making their moves. Everybody's mm -hmm. kind of pivoting. Sure. And so part of me feels like there's going to be... And then, of course, we have the Chosen making their move. I, I think something's going to happen to disrupt all of this. Like he's setting us up for these plots, but then something big is about to happen and it's going to throw everything off. Mm -hmm. Well, something mm -hmm. kind of big changes in the next scene when a peddler shows up. And that's kind of big for Gawain, at least. Yes. Um, you know, because this peddler shows up and, and it's a normal interchange at first. Um, you know, say, hey, you know, I'm going to trade. And so oh, we're about to approach. I he Oh, I heard they have lots of gold. That'd be great. Uh, from Kyrian. So I'd love to trade. They don't hurt peddlers at all. And, and then Gawain asks, like, do you have any news going on? It's like, Oh yeah, I guess. I mean, Rand took Kyrian. and he also took Andor, you know, killed more gays. And before, you know, before you can even finish the sentence, Rand grabs the guy by his like collar throat. And he's like, what'd you just say? Like, yeah. yeah. Um, Tries to keep it together, but is clearly, yeah, knocked oh, yeah. off balance with this. Oh, sure. Understandably so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just heard news that his mother's dead and that ran killer. Oh. Yeah. That, 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 that would be devastating news. Um, yeah. And then possible rumor of Elaine also being dead, but, you know, by, the guy can't Santa. confirm that at all. You know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, Gawain's really upset. I mean, realizes he doesn't need to take the anger out on the peddler. Eventually, lets him go. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it, he's definitely uh, shook. Yeah. And he has that moment where he thinks a little bit later, where he thinks about his, you know, the oath that he took that he would be the first to die, first to bleed, whatever. Like his right. sole purpose in life his, is the protection of his sister. His blood spilt first or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, Chris, I like the optimism that he finds a way to figure out more of the truth sooner rather than later. But, <laughs> yeah. A guy one doesn't really understand fake news yet. That's uh, in the chat. <laughs> in the chat. The, I can see this being a, like a seed being planted that's going to drastically change the character of Gawain. Uh maybe send him on a rampage or maybe just slowly over time and a long period of time, uh, make him an enemy of Rand for like his own personal reasons to the point where like 
if it if it's prolonged for long enough, even if he finds out the truth that Merguez is alive and his sister's alive, that hate has built up so strongly in him towards Rand, and that momentum in his character and his being like is so so far gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he probably like I I just see this continuing that this has the chance of being one of those small fuck ups early on here that can lead to huge drastic outcomes. I mean, he might even become a dark friend. He even states that if he sees Rand, he says, "See how well the Dragon Reborn can do with a sword through his heart." Um, right. But but good question, Chris. If if his sole purpose now is all right, it's not about. You know, he stayed at the tower for his sister. He stayed at the tower for Egwene. He thought he was doing the right thing and protecting the tower because of his mom's relationship and blah, blah, blah. But now, now his sole purpose is revenge. Mm -hmm. um, what is he willing to do to get that revenge? If he puts that revenge above anything else, could he become a dark friend? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can he get recruited by whomever might give him the better chance and more power and whatever? <clears throat> Absolutely. <For sure>. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So this mm -hmm. could send him on a pretty wicked spiral. Yeah. Unless he makes it to Rand around the same time the White Cloaks do. Right. And There's still hope if he could find out some. Yeah, if he could find some info rather soon to negate some of this news. But the longer it festers, considering yeah. that oath he gave as a very young child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to be rough. Could be. So yeah, I mean, it's a short point of view, but it has a very large implications for the future. If, like Ian said, it festers. Yeah, and it doesn't have re resolution quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and if if they're pairing up with the Shido, like no matter how yeah they meet up with Rand, or if they do, do you think this is going to be a happy meeting? There's not going to mm -hmm. be a quick opportunity for Gawain and Rand to have a little chit chat. <laughs> Yeah, you know exactly. They're, they're gonna find them. They find themselves fighting right off the bat. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And, and so you know, after this, we switch to Katarine's point of view. Uh, anything from Gawain before we switch over to Katarine? No. Nah. Yeah. So Katarine's with uh, you know, kind of leading the Aes Sedai here, and they agree to meet the Aiel, and they have this little interchange with uh, Savannah. Uh, who is now, I guess, the de facto leader of the Shadow, um, and um, and um, comes in with all these demands and everything like that. And Katarina is kind of like, I think it's like, who, who the hell does she think she is? It's like, like that's not how it works. Like, either you serve the White One, or you are, you know, are you are forced to serve the White Tower. There's no like, you either willingly do it or you're forced to do it. There's no negotiating with the White Tower. It's you do what we say. <laughs> Um, you know, which is pump up is, the pompous. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, they, they, they do agree somewhat, uh, of, of, a I guess a loose alliance, but, but Savannah also wants to see Rand's face and make sure he knows it's them. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, when, when they do meet up. So I think the, you know, of course the shadow have a completely different motive than these I said, I do somewhat. Um, you know, they're, they're on a charge from Elida uh, to bring Rand back, I guess, somewhat safely or, or just back <laughs> in general, um, you know, alive. Whereas uh, I don't know necessarily if the Shadow had the same idea, but no. And the arrogance and stupidity and ignorance of the Aes Sedai still to think that their influence is so great. They, they think people think very highly of them when they really don't they're they're looking mm -hmm. at the shido as like a useful tool the same way mm -hmm. they're looking at gawain and the younglings is well these are pawns that we can move around to help our scheme mm -hmm. the right. the shido don't think of themselves that way right no they're trying to partner on this they don't mm -hmm. see themselves as less than or i'm going to do your bidding so mm -hmm. there's gonna be a rude awakening for these eyes to die at some point Right. I agree. And then we go into Katarina's true colors. Um, <laughs> I see your true <laughs> colors shining through. I thought and, black and was the absence of color. 
Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> or, or is white the absence color? All right. Yeah, no, white is all the colors combined. All the black colors. Yeah, black sucks. Okay. Black yeah, is the point. absence. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, no colors. <laughs> just, no just colors. black. Uh, yes. Yeah, Ken Reed's been black for twelve years. Um, and so is Galena. So, like, two of the six are black Aja. <laughs> like, um, this, coincidence. This is gonna, this is gonna turn not. out. Gr- this is gonna turn out great, right, guys? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it, 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 what do you, what do you guys think about, you know, black Aja within this party? I mean, it's only six Aes Sedai that were chosen, you know, like, like one third of them are, are at least as far as we know, at least one third. Of yeah. Them are let's say we don't know how many really are. I think yeah. it's just indicative of the state of the Aes Sedai and it goes all the way to Swan and her being there, but not being there, you know? If you're the leader, you need to be fully committed to your people. I mean, this goes back before her, too. Let's just be real. Probably goes back to two or three Amelin, who mm-hmm. probably had the idea that they needed to be focused more on finding the Dragon Reborn and mm-hmm. taking the control rather than managing their team. Or I should say leading. They managed very well. I tell you to do this, I expect you to do it. I tell you to do that, I expect you to do it. They didn't really lead their people. So, you know, that poison kind of crept in and then spread. Yeah. And I still blame the Oath Rod, too. It's done more harm than good for them. Yeah, because there's this false sense of security. Yep. You have this ever-present idea that people can't lie to you and that they have taken a, a... you know, unbreakable oath. But now they're just master manipulators. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Yeah. I bet the oath rod was probably introduced by like the original black Aja. Mm -hmm. Like the original Aes Sedai dark friend that was like, well, we're going to slide this in here just to fuck up all their plans. (laughs) <laughs> and that'll, and that that'll make it easy. easy that'll make it easy for us to operate it'll also give us cover because they're going to assume we're telling the truth and that we can't kill them. meanwhile we got some secret way of being able to get around that right yep shady mm-hmm. uh but also like we we don't know for certain that the all the ice that i gathered in saladara mm-hmm. we don't we don't know that there's not black aja there we don't. In fact, statistically, I mean, you look at how we're finding them sprinkled around everywhere. I would mm-hmm. say there are Black Aja there in Saladar, and they just don't know it. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um. So, yeah, anything from this before we switch over to Savannah's point of view? Anything more on the Black Aja? No. They're just there. They're going to mess some stuff up. But, you know, I don't know how to say this, but I don't really think there's much relevance to those two. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't see this group getting that close to Rand, to be honest okay. with you. Yeah, I don't, I don't get mm-hmm. that feeling either. Okay. I feel like they have a better chance of somehow coming into contact with the other group of Aes Sedai or running into white cloaks and then or even a group of Aiel that are out to hunt down the rest of the Shido. Yeah. There's so many barriers they would have to get through. There's not going to be a simple, you know, procession to Rand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. I love all the shirts that are popping up in the chat. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, so there is the thing about the order of uh, not killing them. She's like, why? She asked orders to preserve the dragon reborn made no sense. Even if they live delivered him into Elida's hands. Um, mm-hmm. And these are orders coming from Elida in the, from Elida herself. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's be part of not, my questions. All right, you're not talking about the Black Aja order. I mean, they, they didn't get into that really. They just you're talking about the orders just to get ran, right? That that came from Elida. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, yeah. Hold on. 
<laughs> so I guess off. I misread that. I thought maybe that was an order that came down within the Black Sisters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For now, Galena, the procession Katerine, Katerine had known only three to recognize. Orders were left on her pillow or in her pocket of her cloak. The ink ready to vanish. She had a secret place to leave messages and dire orders not to see him. She never disobeyed. There might be black sisters along, those following the day behind, but she had no way of knowing why she asked. Orders to preserve the dragon reborn. I guess the way she, when she talks about the orders to preserve the dragon reborn, it's right after she was talking about the secret messages she was receiving as a black Aja. Sure. So I assumed she got it through that. Okay. And then again, I'm jumping all over the place, but then it goes to the conversation from Dima Dread, I guess later on. Mm -hmm. about how the order is to let the Lord of Chaos reign. So I kind of, in my mind, connected those dots as that was part of the order. And mm -hmm. that Rand is, at least from the great Lord of the Dark or whatever we're calling him these days, like he considers Rand the Lord of Chaos. Okay. Interesting. Sorry. Yeah. I'm rambling. So Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we switched to Savannah, um, uh, uh, Thervera, Thereva, 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 um, mm -hmm. uh, is upset about the way that I said I treated them, but Savannah is content because they did agree to an alliance. Um, you know, uh, they, they're kind of going back and forth critiquing the plan. Uh, Savannah does feel threatened about her authority. It's kind of this, this little, you can see some cracks in the shadow itself. So, you know, um, and their idea is, you know, they want a knife between Rand's ribs. Um, at least some of them do. And, you know, maybe it's easier dealing with the Aes Sedai, so forth and so on. I love her attitude. A, a new day has come. We no longer are bound to the threefold land. Any eye can see that was, has, what was has changed. We must change or be ended as if we never were. Then she said, New day or old day, what are we to do with Randall Thor if we do not manage to take him from the eyes to die? Better and easier if we slipped a knife between his ribs while they were escorting him to the north. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not that they want to get rid of him. It's that they want to take him. Right. And she also has the idea that they'll never send another man to Roydian. Mm -hmm. Like, she's, you know... Yeah, Being that's part of this power, change. Like, yeah, I'm chief now. I'm chief. Right. I'm taking over. You know, she wants to have the so-called Karakaran, the chief of chiefs, chained before her tent like a vicious dog. Mm. And then the land would belong to the Shido. Yeah. So she's all about, you know, taking over this new land. And I guess <clears throat> in her mind that she can capture Rand then she will be able to get the rest of the eyes to die, or the rest of the um IL to follow her. Right. Good luck with that. And she does have this this strange cube because uh that, yeah. that she got from uh, that land. A random man. So that mm -hmm. was probably part of Demadred's mm. visit with the dark one. Maybe he <sighs> Was given a new toy to play with. Yeah. Here's a good one. Tell us your thoughts about Savannah. Hmm. Savannah. Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Well, this time of year, it's getting quite moist. <laughs> the humidity, I declare. I know it's not Memorial Day yet, but I will wear my seersucker. <laughs> it breathes nicely. Yeah. I like her. I mean, she's ambitious. Okay. She's not going to be successful. She's <laughs> going to get in the way, but at least she's ambitious. Okay. Ian, your thoughts? I wouldn't mind if they were like walking down a path and a giant boulder just accidentally landed on her and we didn't have to read about her anymore. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> But what do you think's in the cube? What's in the cube? What's in the cube? Pandora's box. <laughs> Pandora's um, box. Hmm. Could be something 
that would allow them to c control Rand. Okay. Or defend themselves against Rand. I, I would think some sort of weapon or some some form of defense when it comes okay. to Rand. Gotcha. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. But okay, so it says that she'd need the aid of a wise one who could channel. Mm hmm. So Angriel or Terangriel? Oh, it's got to be some type of Terangriel. <laughs> Which is the one where you have to channel to use it? Is it Terangriel? Well, Terangriel don't necessarily have to channel to use it. So Angriels and Sawangriels enhance the power. Terangriels do things. Um, sometimes they need channeling. Sometimes they don't. Like the the World of Dream, okay. the the ring. You don't necessarily have to channel for that one to gotcha. be used. If anyone can use it. Uh, I think, but uh, most of them you have to channel in some kind of Didn't way. Didn't we see a things. stone already that could transport things and people to places? Portal stones. Well, portal Maybe stones, this yeah. is a smaller version of a portal stone. Huh. Mm. Interesting. And maybe once this is activated, it would take Rand to, I don't know, somewhere he doesn't want to be. Or somewhere that he'll have to end up going eventually, but doesn't want to go right now. I Maybe think this is, him. I think Chet has the best theory. So, uh, do you think the box has little colored squares on it? Is it a Rubik's? Yeah, cube? you you peel, the stickers, <laughs> you peel all the stickers off, then rearrange it so they're all on the same side. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's sweet victory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. But I mean, it has writing on it and everything. It just kind of reminds me of. <laughs> The portal stones. Okay. So maybe it's a portable portal stone that would take Rand somewhere where he's in the midst of 13 dark ones, or yeah. we just, we don't know. Or maybe it's uh, one of these things that have like different element powers on it. And then you have the fifth element and you <laughs> have to insert all the wah, wah, wah. <laughs> crossover, man. You can have a crossover, right? <laughs> multi pass um so, uh do, do do we have anything else from this before we move on uh could be next? could be the old dick in a box oh it could be and they dick in a, box. a very small one <laughs> the, the guy that met him on the mountain was like hey check out what's in this box in box <laughs> now nah, just open the lid yeah, re just reach down in there it's at the bottom yeah <laughs> yeah adam uh you guys ready Yep. Get him more gays. Yeah, so we got him more gays. Uh, obviously still alive. Um, we already do this. But Morgays is um on her way down south. Um, and she's kind of in this little tiff with Talonvor. Uh say little tiff. They're in a big tiff. Um <laughs> it's Talonvor wanted them to go to Gilladin, not Gilladin. Uh, and uh they went to, towards uh, I guess was it uh um um uh, um, um Amador instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, where the white cloaks are and and Talonvor thinks it's a bad idea um thinks it should go the other way and yeah that's kind of where we are and they're and he's thinking less and less of her as a queen and more as a peer and she's not really having that either it's this really really interesting dynamic going on yeah so and i'm skipping a bunch to get to it but when she finally like gives him a command like get on your knees and he just doesn't and she's like Am I not your queen? And he's like, I mean, are you? I mean, yeah. like queen, queen, but I mean, so queen she's of here. what? Where's your she's, queendom? <laughs> but she's in Amadisia, right? And she's kissing up to somebody he feels like is less than her. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you want me to treat you like a queen? You need to be a queen. Exactly. Right. Like here right. she is. I mean, she's doing the diplomatic thing. She needs mm -hmm. the power that this you know anointed by the light king and defender of amadicia has and she knows that rumors have been flying and that he's probably the reason why they were flying she realizes that he doesn't give her the respect that she deserves she, he realizes she realizes that he's leading her on but day by day by day she's making by day, a little by day, bit of progress by day by day and she's she's down there trying to recruit people to support her to come back and retake her throne. Uh, where Talonvor just just views it as she abandoned everything. I mean, he even quotes saying, "I will not abandon you, you at this side of death, Morgays, but you've abandoned much. You've abandoned Andor to Gabriel." Um, you know, and, and Morgays 
doesn't think that any house in Andor would support her coming back against Gabriel. Of course, not knowing that Gabriel's dead unless she had some other nations behind her. So, you know, she's trying to, like you said, the diplomatic approach where Talon is like, how could you do this? Um, you need to go back and take your throne. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, the longer you leave that, that vacuum there, I mean, Rand can't stay there. So when he leaves, somebody has to be put in charge. The longer you leave them there, the the more of a grip, more of a hold they'll have because they're going to have the backing of the Dragon Reborn, which not many people are going to want to cross, especially after what they just witnessed in Camelin. So you would think speed would be of the essence. <laughs> <laughs> we got bots in our chat. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> got bots in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, though, Talonvor has a point. She could have gone elsewhere. She could have not begged so much. She could have, could have, could have, could have. He's really stuck on what he feels like they should have done versus what was done. And we're not actually making, you know, the best of the situation. Here we are in a place where she could get support. And he could be going out to do more for that, or at least they're supporting her morally because this has got to be the worst position she's ever been in because she's begging. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Tom's had her in worse positions. Well, <laughs> giggity. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And then, and then of course, Lenny's being Lenny uh, the entire time, which is just getting under Morgase's skin as well. Like, and I know still treating her like a little me, girl. And... Raising my daughter. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and of course there's this other girl that's um, I guess uh Langwin's uh, better half or, or some something uh, Brianna, who we've, we met in book two. Uh, and we talked about a lot, I think in shadow rising, I'm really last book. Um, okay. Uh, but she's w traveling with him as well. And, you know, she's from Kyrian, so doesn't really look at Marques as, as anything. a queen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, she's, she's her own escort company, you know, Talon is not really standing with her. Lenny's looking at her as a child. Brianna could care less. Uh, you know, it's, it's not really, she's not in a, a room full of like what she's used to as queen where everyone just bows hey, down to how her. How about the, like the, little similarities between this and Elaine traveling around the world with her posse <laughs> and like even Nynaeve getting sick of like, look, I get it. You're the daughter heir of blah, blah, blah. But Jesus, we're not there right now. Like <laughs> snap out of it. Welcome to the real world. Okay. Well, uh, I think it really shook more gaze and it's a small thing, but it was big for her. She's like, Hey, I want a drink. So the woman pours her a drink. Then Lenny grabs a drink. Okay, well, it's Lenny. And this woman pours herself a drink. It's like, all right, we are all even. We all going to drink today. Like, <laughs> yeah. we, are, we are all going to share in this moment where we are all here sitting here trying to figure it out. Lenny right. is the best, though. I mean, she's trying to, first off, get more gays, get her groove back. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. Like, Talk about talent know, for her and more gays snaps at her. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> So you were digmatized for long enough. Did Let's you go ahead and break. Hypnotized or digmatized? <laughs> Let's go ahead and you break said, that spell. Kind of like you said, digmatized. I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, uh, that's a thing. <laughs> she kind of was when you think about it. <laughs> well, I was in a relationship uh, for nine years, and then we just ended. It. I was like, all right, cool. So you were there for nine years. Uh, so yeah. Um, Ah. We're gay's not having any of it though. Um, so anything about all this before uh, we get our, our Lord Captain Commander to come in? I think Margaze is being humbled a little bit. I definitely 100%. When she does take her throne back, she's definitely going to come at it from another angle. And I can see her. Do you think she's going to get her thrown back? Yeah, definitely. How Stella got her groove back. All right. Oh, she's getting it back. <laughs> I don't doubt that in the slightest. How long she holds it is another question. But I feel like Rand will hold true to giving it to her. And I feel like 
There's the kicker. She can't get it at this point. She cannot get it without Rand's blessing. Mm-hmm. Yep. How, how really the give it back fuck is that going to happen? Yeah, but how how are they going to get together? She's going to go on the run again. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like she ends up on the run. She runs into one of her two sons. They go to Rand, mm-hmm. who has a Gwen with him. Elaine, this is Elaine. Elaine. I know. I'm sorry. It's the dark. It's, it's, and stormy. it's a lot of. It's a lot of e, e names. Yeah. It's the dark and stormy. Or, or at least men mm-hmm. who knows that Elaine is still alive. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's ways that all of these holes can be filled in, and all these. But see, then, this here's my other fixed, thought. But... We're on book six to fourteen, and <laughs> Chanel has said to me it is going down too many times. I think we're coming up with all these great ideas. And then we mm-hmm. hit the next chapter, and it's like we're gonna get blown out of the water completely. <laughs> but the, but yeah. so the, I I keep Game that in mind friends. with how many books are left. I would love to see everything get tied up nicely, but and maybe it does in the end. But we're nowhere near the end. There's gonna be no. chaos in between. <laughs> what is the name of the book? Lord of Chaos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that means everything that could go wrong is gonna go wrong in this book. That Rand is going to go berserker down his own path, and the world around him is just everybody that should be somewhere is going to be in the exact opposite place they should be, and just all this misinformation and people acting off of like fiction, not facts, and chaos. Chaos. Lord of Chaos. That's what Lord that's of- what I feel is going to happen here. Yeah. So. Yeah. So then we have Pedro Niall come in, um, the leader of the this, white, the leader himself of the white cloaks. And that's what I'm guy. saying. Like, so we got two. I'm gonna skip way ahead because I, was, I got to do it. We have our queen or gates with two options: follow along with the white cloaks. Doesn't have to be indefinitely. She could just start down this path, mm-hmm. or go back on the run. Because we know that's offered to her. If right. she ends up with the white cloaks, I feel like she's going to run into Galad. But how does that help us? Because then Galad can confirm that Elaine's still alive. But how does that get to Gawain? It's not about Gawain. It's about her relationship with Rand, Rand. the queen's relationship with Rand. Because she's under the impression that Rand's there to like take her throne and, you know, has taken her throne. But then we're going to see that Rand has Elaine. So then like pieces are going to kind of fall together there. And then again, I still feel like there's a deeper connection with Rand and this family. I know I, I made that, um, assumption earlier on like there's going to be some story like we don't know the connection that his mother has maybe she served maybe she was you know uh an Aes Sedai for the court or something I don't know but there's going to be a connection there's got to be something deeper with mm-hmm. Rand besides just him and Elaine but that's enough in and of itself yeah to kind of pull that group together and then it's going to kind of put the white cloaks at odds because, you know, Galad has his group and they're going to follow him. They're not going to go against his mother. I think this I, is part I, of the chaos. I, I've yet to put yeah. in my head any good reason to align with the white cloaks. Out of everybody in this book so far, they have still just remained. Uh, an enemy. He does, he does pledge five thousand soldiers for her if she asks for it. She can have five thousand white cloaks at her back. <laughs> that's like that's like the Pope saying, "Yeah, you could be king, but I place the crown on your head." Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. That's happened plenty of times throughout history. <laughs> I know, that's, that's Until sweet, eventually, yeah. somebody snatched the crown and put it on his own head, and that's what she needs to do. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and, and, and we're just kind of stuck because she doesn't know whether or not she wants to accept this or not. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, when he first came in, she thought he was there to arrest her, of course, but, uh, you know, that's, qu- that's quickly taken off the table. And, uh, you know, we is still kind of toying. Do, you, do I want to? And he informs her. It's like, Hey, Gabriel's dead. Ran killed her. He holds with Camelin. Why isn't she um, seeking out Aes Sedai? Well, because she, she, the she, 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 she talks about that. She talks about that. She said she wished she, you know, now thinking back in hindsight that she hadn't been because of Elaine. She had this because they took Elaine away from the White Tower and she was pissed at the White Tower and sent a delegation there. That was why Elida went there originally was because yeah, she was split. Whole, yeah. yeah, she kicked Elida out saying she wants nothing to do with Vice Sedai anymore. So she kind of burned a bridge. Yeah, but I feel like that's an easier bridge to mend than aligning with the white cloaks. And yeah. and you'd have better access to information with the, well, whether you could trust her or not, this is a different story, but access to information like I said, I have a way of getting messages and information from all around the known world. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what but she's going to do. I don't necessarily agree with anything she's done so far. I don't know what she's thinking. She didn't yeah. realize beforehand that the white cloaks were in charge here. Mm-hmm. She went to a king for aid mm-hmm. and ended yeah. up with the white cloaks for an answer. Yeah, true. Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, as we move a little bit forward, we got a Serban boy who's like, Yeah, before, before we get there, I mean, what do you think about Pedro Nile's comment about Rand being a false dragon and just being a puppet of the White Tower and sure that the Aes Sedai are just channeling for Rand to make him look like he's actually doing channeling and stuff like that, that he's actually just a puppet? Well, we also know that Padden Fane has not come back into play, but he's also like controlling the minds of the White Cloaks. He's been yeah, involved, he's, yeah. He's influencing. Um, that's probably part of it. So the question is, is this guy extremely naive or does he know who Rand is and he's trying to do some sort of misinformation campaign here? I can't believe that he's that naive. Mm -hmm. No, the misinformation would make sense because he needs to downplay Rand's power to upplay his own. Yeah, that'd be my guess, some variation of that. And even though Rand's got the Aeol, he's probably got the larger army. He just needs the people to back him. Yeah. Yep. And so after this, Niall Niall leaves, um, and Talavor, Basil Gill, and Languin all dart in, saying, "Like, listen, they came with thirty men. We would have warned you, but they came fast on us, and uh, we were afraid for your life." And Morgay snaps, and I'm like, "I'm fine." <laughs> uh, hey, they, this is how you're gonna protect me. Then I don't need you. I don't need you. Yeah, and they, yeah, pretty much Talavor. Yeah, leaves he right after that. Out, has he a hissy out, fit. Has a hissy fit, and then the girls get in a fight about teasing each other about stuff, and Morgase throws a cup of punch <laughs> and screams at all of them to get out. And and even yeah, Lily's up. like, I just want you to know, he got knocked out for you. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. The, up until this point, this whole section was just kind of. Blah. A little meh Blah. and a little bit yeah. annoying to me because I'm like, yeah. what, what are you doing? What is this yeah. bullshit? It is. But then, but then, shortly after, a young, lively servant comes in with a named, crooked nose. With a crooked <laughs> nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's C team. It's all right. It's Worst not even C-team, right? <laughs> dark friend ever. <laughs> not even Peter's back. C-team. <laughs> Fucking bought the T-shirt. It's Peter from oh, Market was in Sharon. <laughs> oh my gosh! Go now, on, now, how great would it be if? So we already know that some of the chosen are able to disguise how they look and everything, right? We've seen it with uh, some of the female chosen. What if Peter is fucking Damadred? <laughs> Or like some supreme, Ooh. like the most badass, like turns out to be Nablus, and he's just slow playing himself into a role. I didn't even think about that. Influence. Team Peter. <laughs> yeah. When I tell if you we, I breezed past this, let me tell you how quickly I breezed past this. I didn't pay attention to the fact that it was Deep Peter until oh, you guys oh, made it. a comment, and I went back. I was like, huh. 
It is Pater. It I is certainly Pater. did not miss that. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. Peter. It wasn't a big shock at all moment, but I did laugh. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And he's still playing the whole, uh, uh, my, um, uncle? so my, my uncle like had an idea, which kind of isn't going to work now, but we'll come up, we'll come up with another one. If you just like, can we, can we be friends and yeah, do and, something yeah. together? I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like <laughs> yeah. either he's like, re- truly the worst dark friend ever. Or he's the best. <laughs> There's no gray area in between. Yeah. Jake is calling you on your... Uh... Eh, there you go. Ah. <laughs> 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 <It's Naples. laughs> uh, you, is, say, you, you, you put that in the chat, Jake, but I'm telling you, like, we've been Peter joking Stables. about Peter from the get-go. <laughs> But, but I remember no, Alan Alan did ask, is he gonna come back? And I think I was like, nah, this is just kind nah, of a minor. We both said thing. no. We were like, yeah, this is like, like a one-off, like how do you work this loser back into the story? <laughs> <laughs> uh everyone comes back. It's uh it's it's the wheel of time. It's 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 amazing how many like, like, small that's, characters. That's the other like thought. Like, does he convince her? Does he get her to go and end up in the hands of dark friends i mean he's he's not that great of a convincer i mean he's like he was saying he's super nervous and, and Morgay's asking to you know about andor he's like i gotta go back to my uncle it's like i'm your queen right like your uncle can wait <laughs> yeah. yeah and if he, and if he like believes in me as the queen and all that jazz he's gonna be okay with you talking to me you don't need his yeah. permission yeah yeah so um, either yeah, either might she... be on to something though. On a serious note, I think he might really be on to something. Yeah. yeah. I, I think he's way more than he's letting on. He's just very casually not he's holding all of his cards to his chest. He's being as innocent and stupid as possible so people don't suspect anything with him. Mm-hmm. I th- I think I think he's the one. Yeah. So you have yeah. two choices. Go with the dark friends and escape, or go with the children. And get an army and be in or, or a third choice. She decides to go with the white cloaks, but feels bad for him and brings him into her posse and he mm-hmm. travels with her. I think they yeah. end up traveling together no matter what after this. I just don't okay. know yeah. how and in which direction. Okay. Sounds good. Anything from this before we switch over to Pedro Niles' point of view? Mm-mm. Okay. So I just now, want to say officially, hold on, sorry. Officially, Pater has not redeemed himself. He is still the worst dark friend ever. Okay. <laughs> just, just for the record. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we get to uh Niall arriving back at the Forces of Light. Uh, you know, um you know, what he told Morgaze was his own interpretation of events and what he believes. And and Bauer, um, you know, lets him know that their papers there waiting signature, and so is Jacob Carradine. Who better known? We we've we've already known this character. Uh, he's the man who calls himself Boris. We found that out a few books ago. Um, I think at the end of the second book, or maybe it was the beginning of the third book. But yeah, Keridan is there waiting for him. A questioner. Yeah. Just refreshing you guys' memories on who Keridan is. Uh, he was the questioner on on the plane who was killing lots and lots of innocent people. Uh, also, it was a dark friend who had the dark friend white cloaks and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I'm just realizing <clears throat> the threads. I, I, <laughs> well, yeah. So all of that way over my head. I listened to this probably three times through, but as long as it is, you know how many times you get distracted listening. Mm-hmm. And I read through once. But this this kind of whole interaction here, I think every time I got so excited about Pater being back mm-hmm. that my brain didn't actually let me focus on this. Yeah. So as you as you just explained all that, I'm like, God, I don't remember any of that. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> I totally missed all of that. <laughs> uh yeah. Well, he's there. Uh, and you know, he's he's asking, you know, they're just basically uh, going tit for tat back and forth about stuff, uh, mostly about Aes Sedai and Saladar. 
um, you know, wants to know whether he wants to take care of them. Uh, Pater, Pater, or not Pater, Patron Nile um, says, no, nope, uh, let's leave the, the Aes Sedai there and kind of confused. It goes back and forth and they're confused yeah. about his motives. And, and you see some of the cracks there about, um, you know, uh, Keratin questioning now Nile's decision to let Aes Sedai just exist. Like what, what's your, why, why are you doing this? You know, um, uh, you know, and, and now, now thought he could bind the nations together under the leadership to dip- dispose land Rand. Um, you know, and, and that one of the things that they keep bringing up is, you know, why would, why would the Aes Sedai do this? And, you know, the dangers of false dragon, he says, well, you know, a rabid lion is what he calls Rand. Um, you know, I'm kind of bouncing through this, but yeah, no, I do, I do remember, I do remember the back and forth about telling him not to go to Saladar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then he references like a previous dragon a thousand years before or more than a thousand years before and had already conquered more than, than Rand has yet. Yeah. Oh, and Niall did not consider himself another Archer Hawkwing, but he was right. what the world had. So he's yeah. trying to put himself he's trying to put himself in a position to prevent what the last false dragon did, mm-hmm. at least grow any bigger than that. So his focus is less on the Aes Sedai and probably because he thinks well, maybe he thinks it might be one of those the enemy of the enemy is my friend at this time. Mm-hmm. Like the Aes Sedai yeah. actually might be some kind of help in keeping Rand in check. And right. at this point, the Aes Sedai are the only ones who can gentle mm-hmm. and take away his power. So they have to be part of his scheme if he wants to stop Rand. Right. Well, then the other, he makes a statement about allowing the tower to destroy itself. Because if they partner with Rand, who he is claiming as a false dragon, the same way Loghain was a false dragon, then you have the tower now helping a false dragon. So the people are no longer going to put their faith in the Aes Sedai. So then he can justly start a war with the tower. But if he starts the war earlier, it's just the White Tower versus Aes Sedai as opposed to the, um, sorry, not White Tower, again, White Cloaks. And White Cloaks. White Cloaks versus Aes Sedai when what he really wants it to be is the White Cloaks protecting the world against the false dragon. Yeah. Again, I'm going under the assumption that he does believe that Rand can channel. And so that's why I'm hanging on to, at some point, this is a smart guy. He knows he has to have some sort of alliance with at least a certain number of Aes Sedai. They're also aware that the tower is split. Mm -hmm. They're aware of the Aes Sedai there in Saladar. So really, at this point, it makes more sense to not touch the Aes Sedai let one There's of the two sides dynamic align with them, though. and then the other Aes Sedai are automatically going to fight against them. Yeah, but there's another dynamic at play, too, that we're not paying close attention to that we really should be. That's oh, yeah. the Chosen. Mm-hmm. They're each manipulating their own group of people. Yeah. And because they want to rule the world. So you have, you know, one Chosen manipulating the White Cloaks. You got one chosen manipulating the white tower you mm-hmm. may potentially have chosen that are in solid r we don't know i doubt it you got samuel, got one more, samuel and Ilion. you got one more in cane yeah. whoever killed asmodian at the very end there oh yeah so with they're all plotting against each other so they're pulling the strings from the background but is pedro nile aware of this no, I don't think he's aware aware of the Forsaken and the Chosen and all that stuff going on. Yeah, he does. He thinks he thinks everything's all just made up. He thinks everything's just peachy and roses, and uh, and that 
This is all just but he's being directed by people like Patton Fain. Sure. He's right. Being so directed by the this, influences there. Yeah. This inquisitor, you know, he's being impacted by the idea that there are madmen out there out to get him. Like he's just got this paranoia. And but he's not, what? I think smartly, he's not in a rush to. I mean, the White Cloaks have plenty of enemies, but he's not in a rush to make more enemies or or situations worse. Well, no, and that's he, where he's, he's looking to make he he's he's looking to make a power play with more gays and link up with her, and he sees and, value in that. So, and that's why. And again, how do we not know what he knows about the people in Saladar? Think mm -hmm. about it. He needs the. The Aes Sedai, the White Tower, to latch themselves on to Rand. And you're right. Maybe he does plan on teaming up with the other group of Aes Sedai who have who in their midst? Elaine. Hmm. With connections to Galad and, yeah. And so you've got a lot of connections there. He can get the people on his side against the one group of the Aes Sedai while kind of controlling the other group of Aes Sedai. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chaos. It Chaos. is. Yeah. And speaking of the Chosen, do you guys ready to switch to the Chosen meetup? Meet up? Yeah. yeah. A little, have a little barbecue. Yeah. So we get, we get to meet, we get to meet two more forsaken, uh, two more chosen. Uh, it's Messina's point of view, which is we haven't met yet. Um, and Simirog's there too, which we've heard of and have not, I don't think we've met Simirog. Um, but apparently she gets studied studiously, you know, studying Simirog studiously. Um, mm -hmm. But so Messina is there building ivory towers uh, with ivory dominoes. You know, she's a little building a house of cards or house mm. of dominoes. And she's really proud of it. And then some rocks over there just doing needlework. You know, this is a nice little wholesome scene. You know, these aren't bad people. <laughs> um, more and more female chosen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And forsaken uh, as they pop up. Yeah. And, and, is, and there like a, is, is it like everything else where there's a balance? There's an equal number of men and women. Well, it's 13 total, second. so it can't be equal. But, well, how do we um, know there's only 13? Ooh, That's what point. we're told so far. That's what we're told, yeah. I want to say it's uh, six or so you have, let's count the women. So you have Messina, Lanfear, uh, Magedian, Sarag, Grendel. It's four. Grendel, it's five. I think that's it for the females. Five females? Mm. I might be missing one. Underrepresented. Shame Under on you, Jordan. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. But you got men. paid less too. So <laughs> fucked up. Don't worry, they'll gain one or two more. Yeah. There you go. So um uh Messina's really uncomfortable about Simrog being there because although um you know she matches her in strength, Simrog is known just to be basically a sadist torturer. Um I mean that's 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 her kind of her to delight in cruelty, a pure pleasure in giving anguish, but that surely was not the problem. Um, mess, whatever her name is, she could be cruel as well where necessary, and she did not care what Simrog did to others. There had to be a reason, but she could not find it. So it's like she's mm -hmm. just irritated by her existence in general. Yeah, true. Yeah. And they're they're sitting there just waiting for Demon Dread to show up. Um, it's been 17 days since he said he was going to get a Shao Ghoul. Um, and, you know, hopefully he's supposed to show up today to deliver a message. Uh, during that time, it says Messina had actually gone to Shao Ghoul several times herself, but the Dark One did not answer her. Um, and as she's having all these thoughts, the gateway forms and disturbs her because she can't even feel it because it's a man channeling and Demon Dread disappears comes in and says hey i'm back and shortly after them grindle shows oh, up yeah there. oh <laughs> yeah and then grindle shows up too and they're like samuel coming is like nah he ain't coming <laughs> he didn't trust you guys <laughs> mm. so uh, we got we got a little group together though uh to talk about their plans 
<laughs> well, I'm going to share some plans with you from the great Lord and nobody tells Samuel oh. he's missing out because he wasn't here. It's his he fault. He missed the meeting. All right. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I take him a to go plate? No, <laughs> we finish all of the ribs here and now here and now. Um, and there's a lot of talk about Angriel here too. You know, they want to get their hands on some Angriel, but they, uh, you know, uh, Messina's apparently been in the White Tower, but they've put lots of wards around the strongholds. Uh, Tyr has some, but those are also kind of guarded. They say get Radian for some, you know, so they know where they all are, um, but they, they can't quite get their hands on them. But they're like, does anybody know where you could find this magic box or what is it called? Stasis box. Stasis box. Is that what our IEL lady has? What's in the box? What's in the <laughs> box? <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What do you think is in the stasis box? Some super powerful thingamabobber. Why does anything have to be in there? Maybe it's just the void. Mm. Okay. It oh. just sucks, sucks Rand in. Yeah. Maybe it's a special soap to clean your taint. I mean, mm. a, sta a stasis box, I mean, but what, yeah. would that be something it that, freezes, that freezes something? It, like, that's what I'm saying. It, it, would, it, it preserves would something from them. the, whatchamacallit, way back when. Yeah, like Age Han Legends. Solo. It, it preserves something. It's like Han Solo. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, frozen yeah, and um, carbonite. It's frozen carbonite, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so Demetri does show up after all this and they, you know, they all ask, well, you know, what's the message? What's the message? And are we supposed to kill Rand? Do we go kill Rand now? And, and Demon Jet quotes the dark ones, exact words saying, no, let the Lord of chaos rule. Yeah. Hmm. Exact Amondo. So what do you think about that? Like the dark one wanting Rand to live? Chaos. <laughs> chaos. Um, Is it Rand that he wants to live though? I mean, that's a response man, to that question. Is the man living in Rand? Demon Dread, Demon Dread living in Rand? <laughs> no. Luce Theron. Luce Theron. Oh, Luce Theron. Oh, yeah. The I Lord mean, of Chaos. You learn about Demon Dread and his, like, his jealousy about Luce Theron, too. Like, he was born a day later. Everything was just one little thing short. He would have been, like, the greatest person in the entire world. And uh, it, he was always in the shadow of Luce Theron because Luce Theron was just that much better. Um, you know, I mean, you could talk about athletes and things like that, you know, throughout history that they just have to be born in a time when Michael Jordan exists. Are they born in a time where yeah. Michael Phelps exists? Um, all these Michaels. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, for, for a lot of Demon Dread's, Demon Dread's motives are around just jealousy of Lee's. Yeah. So as far as letting the Lord of Chaos reign, um, gosh, it, it, there could be a handful of things. Like I was thinking, um, I mean, how many times have uh, governments or, or leaders or rulers, you, you know, they were certainly strong enough to go in and squash an enemy or a group of enemies? Um but they chose rather to let them fight amongst themselves and weaken themselves. Like right now we have a bit of a, di a divide among the Aes Sedai, but it can certainly get worse. Mm -hmm. We have a split with the ID with the Aiel, but you know, there's more battles that could come and they can wear each other down. Um, yeah. You, you risk if you attack too strongly too soon, you know, everybody else rallying, like rallying against you because of that. Maybe there's still hope that Rand or Luce Theron can, you know, serve the, the Dark Lord versus being destroyed by him or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things can go into play. Yeah. Right. What do, so what do many you think, questions. What do you think, Chris, about uh, Messina being a teacher? <laughs> was she a teacher, though, or was she almost a teacher? It said, it said she was trying to be a re she tried to be a researcher, but they told her she had to be a teacher instead. I, yeah, I, she could be a researcher, she could be a teacher. It would make it, it would just prove the point. That's exactly why she turned the way she did. She's like, you know mm -hmm. what? The world would be better off. <laughs> the world would be better off. 
Yeah. I make Screw more money this shit. Over here. I'm gonna serve I'm gonna serve <laughs> Satan. <laughs> I make more money over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or maybe maybe crossover Messina is actually Dolores Umbridge, right? That's uh yeah, I get I get better health benefits mm. over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean living forever is kind of nice. Yeah, it is. Good point. Hmm. Anything else from this whole interaction that you guys want to discuss or anything that we missed before we get to the final point of view? They're all super petty. They are. If they yeah. were together, they could have taken the world over by now. Probably. But that's, I mean, I think the dark, I think it actually mentions this in previous books. Like the dark one actually wants them to vie for power. It's like one of those things that they, yeah, they thrive but I mean, on. Come it. on. They were, be smarter. Kill the common enemy, then go to war with each other. Yeah, but then you got the people like how Landfair was thinking earlier and talking to her small group, like, all right, you know, you know, maybe we get lucky and a few more chosen ones get knocked off in this battle against Rand and we'll just stay strong together and then we will rule, sort of thing. Cause some of them want to have so at least like Damadred, when he talks about it, it's like he'll rule the world. You know, of course he'll be he'll be he'll be behind, you know, the great lord. But other than that, he'll be ruling. Where you got the feeling from Landfear that she had a plan and her goal was to be in charge and no one else, including the great lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, if they were smarter people, sure, they could work a system out. I mean, they live forever. All right, you get it this fifty years, I get it the next fifty years. They're they have more ambition than smarts when it That's, comes to this this kind of strategy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else from this before we switch over to Osingar? Nah. <sighs> this is uh gets a little interesting here. So <laughs> Osingar's point of view, they're they're back in we're back in Shallow Ghoul where we started this prologue, uh, in a windless room not far from Shallow Ghoul. And uh Osingar cannot stop touching his face, looking in the mirror because to make sure it's still real, because it's he's younger than he was before in a different body. Um, but it's still him. Um, you know, he was given the name Osingar before he had woke from his second sleep. And there's a woman with him, Erangar. Uh, both were names of dueling daggers that were popular before the opening of the boar. Um, so do you know who these people are? Well, remember I messaged the two of you and I'm like, did land fear and, uh, Oh my goodness. His name ravine or Asmodian Asmodian just come back. Okay. Well, that's true. Cause Ravine was totally blasted out of existence. Yeah. Right. So that could be Asmodi. Or one of the two that died so, in book one. Yeah. Agonor and Baphomol. So like, I, Rav- Ravine was killed by Balefire, and I think Bale, Bale uh, in the Stone of Tear was killed by Bale, Balefire from Moraine. Yeah. So they were both, they were both Balefired. Everyone else died natural deaths. Um, where are I say natural, not bail fire deaths. <laughs> right. So they so they still have a chance to come back. Yes. Yeah, and the great lord forever. already said bail fire is the one thing he can't really save you from. He can't yeah. save you from. Yeah. But he can bring anybody else back from the dead. I mean he's the Lord of the Grave. He can bring people yeah. back from the dead. In a different body. They just basically put your soul into a different body. So here we go. So the question is who are these people? Well, we get some hints about uh, Arangar because it's a female body, but he still channels Sidene, not Sidene. It even says Landfear seemed cautious by contrast. Yeah, so it's not Landfear. It's it's a male forsaken in a female body. So one anyway. of them. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, and then of course our good friend Shadar. Haran comes back. Uh, Shade our Haran, our tall, big, creepy Mergel. Um, you know, and, and immediately Aaron Gar starts complaining about the body he was put in. Uh, you know, and, and the Mergel's like, uh, "It's the best we could find for you, dude. Just be happy with what you got." <laughs> <laughs> 
And he said, just like that with a gravelly voice, dude, chill out. <laughs> it's what we got, man. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Now you really have me confused. I have no idea who it is that came back. Yeah, and you got me hunting for clues, so I'm like speed reading here. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like they're clearly in, angry in both. People. Yeah, Osengar finds himself not able to channel. Uh, and he thinks, you know, uh, Aaron Gar probably Asmodian. Do you think it's Asmodian? I do think yeah. he's yeah. Because what? If, what if? What if Land fears uh, somehow the shield she put on him still exists? Well, no, eventually. we know why. He can't channel because the Dark One isn't allowing him to. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. that gets explained. That, to, but yeah. I really do think that one is Asmodian. I don't know who the other one is unless it's the Forsaken that was killed in book one. Uh, Agonor or Balthamo. The, the one that was was not killed by Balefire. Well, neither one, one of those were. Though, neither one of those were. I mean, uh, Agnor burnt himself out when fighting Rand, and Bothamel was killed by the Green Man. Well, yeah. not the one killed by the Green Man. I just want that to be a finalized. Like that death, <laughs> has, that death has to be a final death because the Green Man died doing it. So, I mean, these ideas are just popping in my head because I really don't know who these people are. Okay. Like, and the, I think it's a good thing that we don't. I love the way that Jordan keeps us guessing throughout the entire book. Always asking yeah. questions and never getting answers. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Agonor gets upset with Shadar Haran and launches himself at, to attack the Fade, even though he can't channel. And the Fade just grabs him up throat, or her by the throat and lifts her off the ground. And you have when, not been severed. Mm -hmm. but you will not channel until you are told you may, and you will never strike at me. I am Shadar Haran. Mm. Mm. Got him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the old holding somebody up by the neck move. That's classic. I mean, I'll well, tell you I what. mean, and we have a, a fade that can, I'm assuming the fade is the one that stopped them from using their power. Maybe. Uh, but again, it would be a specific direction in control from the great Lord. I mean, that's specifically who he serves. Yeah. Remember, this is the, this is the slightly bigger fade. Exactly. Well, this is, and they actually, it, this is when shadow Ron says that to them. I mean, they said, you know, you're a merge all you serve us. We're chosen. And, and he replies back saying, I don't serve you. I serve the dark one directly and only the dark one. Yeah. So yeah, that's you it. Guys can, you guys can fuck off. <laughs> You can beat it. I'm with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, and then when Agonar agrees to submit to the Dark One, uh, you know, they, that's when he finally sets her down. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and Ozengar thinks it's funny that that's the body that got chosen for. For, for, for yeah, Aragorn. got him. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had other options, but this is what I went with. Yeah, sucker. Mm. And you get a little bit about, I guess, doesn't it say about one of them created the Trollocs and stuff like that? Doesn't it say something like that in this little ch section? Uh, mm. I thought that was before with Damadred talking about how he was okay. there when they were first creating created. them. Okay, I might get sections blended together. Yeah. yeah. Which is interesting that they were a creation of the Forsaken, the Chosen. Mm -hmm. Or, well, maybe maybe they were created before we had that differentiation. But not necessarily mm -hmm. a creation out of nothingness. Like It's not like the Great Lord said, let there be Trollocs, you know? Right, yeah. They were a science experiment gone right, gone wrong. Yeah. Yeah. All right, depending on which way you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. so yeah um and then you know the final thing is just shadow wrong says you know hey dead or alive you, you were dead now you're alive for a second time will you serve the great lord again and they both agree not in their heads and 
that's when um Shadow Haran says, then okay, if you serve the Dark One, you can live, and if you succeed, you'll live forever and be raised above all others. And that's how we in the prologue. There's a lot that dun, happens dun, here. Dun. So anything else you want to talk about about all this? Or about any of these sections? Because there's lots of sections. So I feel like I'm doing our listeners a disservice because this last little section is fantastic. It has me intrigued. My mind is running in circles. I just don't have much to say about it because I don't know what to say. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's I mean, We're at a true read and find out point. Yeah, big time on that. <laughs> yeah. Big time. And these might not be found out next chapter. Our pro- That's what I'm saying. That's what bothers me about some of these prologues. Sometimes that shit don't make sense for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It might not have anything to do with this fucking book. Chanel has <laughs> apparently gone back and read the prologue a couple of times and has gone back to other stuff in other books. So, yeah. It's about to get crazy then. It yeah. is. That means we're about to get I don't know how much she's just messing with me and how much. <laughs> It's true. Like Chanel is the Lord of Chaos in Chris's household. <laughs> no, that's perfect. At least, and now I don't know her very well. Met her briefly, and we've heard you speak about her. She doesn't se- seem like the type that, like, in a moment of anger, she's going to take your most precious vulnerabilities and throw it in your face. So it's not like y'all can get an argument one day and she's going to be like, yeah, well, Tom dies, da 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 da. Right no, after, she'd never do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least you don't have to worry about that. If yeah. nothing else, she loves the books enough. Even if she didn't love no. me enough, she loves. <laughs> she, that's good. <laughs> hey, that's good too. There you go. So, anything that we missed from all these sections, or anything else that you guys want to talk about, or this is such a long prologue. It took me as as we got towards the end. I started to like. All right, I'm anxious. Let's let's move on. Like I read this. Yeah. Last week, I was ready for chapter one. one. Yeah. Yeah, you got into this quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get into it now. Uh, so, uh, favorite characters? Is that, is that even a fair question? <laughs> I don't know if it is or not. There's so many to choose from. I, 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 I didn't even you think can, about you that. Can pick, you, you can pick a couple. That's fair. Uh, Perrin. Perrin. Perrin is my favorite character because out of all the characters... He is the only one that has given us anything decisive. He's going yeah. back to Ran. Period. He has no other objective. He has no desire. He doesn't want to run anything. Doesn't want to own anything. Barely wants to be married. He just happened into that because he thought he was marching to his death. Like yeah. now he's like, ah, I'll go ahead and deal with the wife. We'll go hang out with the friends, and mm-hmm. we'll get into some mess with the guys. But at the end of the day, he just wants to be Perrin Golden Eyes, runner of the, with the wolves. Like that's the title I'm giving him because that's really what he wants to do. He just wants to be free. And he's gonna do whatever it takes for him to get to that point. Fair enough. I'm gonna have to go with Shidar Haran. <sighs> yeah, that was a good Come one. Come on. Yeah, he's kind of a beast. <laughs> Pretty, I mean, the chokehold, the, the Darth whole, Vader, yeah, uh, the whole just kidding. Who do you I think don't work for you, him? you work for me. What was that gonna question, Chris? Who? who do you think is gonna kill him? Who shout Darth out Haram? Haram. Shh, uh, I don't think he's going nowhere. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, he's, he's <laughs> gotta die eventually. Who do you think is gonna end him? I don't see it happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he might be like a Bella. Just you don't see Matt there. getting a lucky shot. No, 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 no bro. <laughs> no, Matt. That's a uh, that's yeah. L- little overpowered. So good picks. So uh, next time we'll be doing chapters one and two um, of this oh, book. Oh boy! And those chapter titles are "Lion on the Hill" and mm. "A New A New Arrival." Oh, I don't need any more characters. I'm having a hard enough time <laughs> keeping up with the ones we do have. I have it gets like worse. It names gets worse. Don't matter anymore. Like for those of you watching, I'm so sorry. I'm not a good. I'm not good with names. Period. You could be a person that I've known for 20 years, and I still won't remember your name. 
there's you this book. Sure. There's this book right here called the Willetown Companion. Right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's just full of of names of characters. And <laughs> that Chris that's... can't touch. <laughs> no, because that's bad. But literally, like most of it is character names. I mean, there are some other stuff in here too, but it's a lot of characters. I can't remember how many uh... thousands of characters there are in this books, but there's, there's a lot. Mm. Um it goes on. Oh, on. oh, we didn't talk about Fayel's dad much. I think we he's didn't arrival. Okay. Yeah. Maybe De- maybe Devram? Jordan will be fair, and that'll be our our new arrival. Okay. Could be. Could be. Or maybe we find out who Pater actually is. Ooh. Or yeah. maybe the Shanshan returned. Who knows? Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. I, I didn't even really look ahead to see what the chapters were about. I mean, I've read them, but I don't. Have any chapters, oh so. no! Maybe Rand starts collecting some male channelers, or because of his proclamation, some male channelers that have been hiding come out, and they're like, "Yo, bro." Maybe got, Tom's like, nephew really isn't dead. Hmm. Right? He got scooped up, and he's part. <gasps> That's gonna be part of the message that Moraine gives to Tom. Be like, he's not actually dead. We scooped him up and hit him. And and he's hidden with some other male channelers or something like that. That would be nah. something. It's a love. I it's a know. love note. We know this, but yeah, come save it, me, big daddy. Yeah, wrapped wrapped in a, a wrapped in a blanket is the horn of the unicorn that they uh, <laughs> made love on. Yeah, it was it uh, w- w- Will takes uh, Ali from Will takes did a TikTok uh, about the love letter from Elaine. Say <laughs> it's like it said like. What she what would it say? I can't remember exactly the wording, but something like that is the most dumbest, most idiotic, most offensive thing I've ever thought of. Send. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something, something like that. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Send. Send. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing next week. Um, and we'll be back here on YouTube again. So um, as long as I uh, don't lose this entire episode due to technical difficulties so um it should be good um but yeah so how you can be found is at the wheel reads um on twitter tiktok facebook instagram and here on youtube um we're going to be now doing this every week so come check us out live uh make sure to hit that subscribe button um it does help uh to get more people to watch us live when we get the subscribe going um also if you hit the like button it does well especially while we're live streaming uh it does actually um uh help with showing up other people's suggestions you know when people log on to youtube it's just like what to watch <laughs> so uh you know those things are really important uh to us while we do this youtube stuff uh but also just come out and hang out with us um you know, uh, we can be also be found uh, at our website at thewillofreads.com. Uh, um, uh, you can find links to all sorts of stuff like our Discord server uh, where we, well, uh, Jake, uh, one of our moderators, he usually will stream uh, the week's episode uh, in the voice chat so you can listen to the episode. Before that, also we have lots of channels where you can talk about lots of stuff. Um, uh, we have merchandise. We have new merchandise. We actually do have our own baby clothesline now. Um, so if you want onesies for your newborn, uh, up to 24 months, so up to two years old, we do sell onesies now. Uh, yeah. The old reads has gone to the baby, baby clothes business. Um, <laughs> cause, cause I show why Chanel not? the onesies. <laughs> She's been like actively talking about wanting to have kids now. So uh-huh. like we're even talking about fast tracking our thought, our, our plans yeah. a little okay. bit. So yeah, I, I talked to since we have our little one, we're, I'm definitely going to buy one for uh for for my my youngest. Um, <laughs> so that that's in the works. I think we I'm do have done a, with kids. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And good point. Um, good decision. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we, we might we might we might foster. We, we've been we, talking about that. And, and we do have a new design for t-shirts. We have a uh, Semestia uh, t-shirt uh, now yeah. available, and and stickers are now available too. So we have lots of stuff coming to it, and we have more stuff being designed right now too for 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 merch. So go check it out. Uh, our merchandise links are in our website. Um, also, you can support us on Patreon. Uh, that is probably the best way to support us because that also uh, just helps do things like provide programs that we use to run this. Um, this does cost money to to 
do this live stream. Um, uh, I could just do it through Zoom and and link it in or do it through YouTube for free, but I use a program and uh, there's lots of other costs that, that do happen through a podcast. So uh, plus the rum. Plus, 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 plus the rub. Now, I don't think I've actually ever bought alcohol, but I can't say I'd never have because uh, I, I use some of Patreon money for Jordan Con. So, but uh, <laughs> so, we share, but, I, but we I, share. Shared, I shared that with other patrons that are there. So, hey, it's a wash. Uh, but yeah, so um, um, yeah, think about that. And other than that, that's all I got for this week. So, until next time, peace. Okay, bye.